Defense first. Uh, Grove will uh, receive the ball and uh, and put their wing T offense into gear here. Bluffton is going to start off the contest as they took a couple seconds off that clock. They want to get this one underway with all the rain and everything, and that's, that's a pretty good idea. Kicking off is going to be Brandon Best for the Bluffton Pirates, and he kicks it deep. It's going to be taken. Nope, it's going to go into the end zone. I tell you what, it hit the five-yard line. It's skidded on by, and standing back there for Columbus Grove is Jared, rather, number five, Brian Troyer, and he just kind of let it go by. Let's set that offense now for the Columbus Grove Bulldogs, their quarterback is Eric Paulding, number 13. Fullback is Bill Hartman, number 15. Chris Howard is going to get a start in this game. We'll be watching him with that hip pointer. Number 33, Jesse Forrest, is the other running back. We'll set the offensive line and the defense as time allows. This offense is the wing tee, and Coach Bachman here will be telling you a little bit about that as this game goes along as well. Again, the quarterback, Palti, he wants to put it up in the air right away. Has himself a receiver, and it falls incomplete. That would have been a big play to start this ball game off as the intended receiver was a split end, Mark Bunn. I tell you, he put that ball right on the money. That was a, a takeoff pattern right down the sideline. He took a about a two-step drop and let that thing fly and put it went right through the receiver's arms. Could have been a big, big play here for Grove. He's going to set up a second down, 10. The ball resting at the 20-yard line. Man in motion is going to be forced. And there's the handoff up the middle. Not much going on. That defensive front line is led by number 75, Rick Orr. And you talk about a good one at the tackle position, Jason Hicks, number 71, 6'2", 272. And Hicks just stepped in there and stopped that, uh, that first play right up the chute. Looked like a trap, and they didn't get it done. The other man is Luke Suter at the other tackle, and Eric McCoy at the other defensive end. He's going to set up a third down and 10, just underway from Harmon Field in Bluffton. The rain coming down good. Same thing. Or if you're a player or fan, the rain coming down bad. Palti going to go with the handoff right side and, and a pretty good pickup. Looks like a first down, and we're going to have trouble all night seeing these guys, especially coach when those numbers start yeah, getting all get gnarled little, up. Yeah, they'll get, they'll get a little bit muddled up here. Right now, that uh, that was a sweep uh, to the uh, to the uh, strong side of the formation. They faked the trap up the middle and held the uh, blood. The faking was very good. Held the Bluffton uh, defense, and then he handed off to the uh, to the halfback. Uh, was it Howard? Yeah, uh, Chris Howard. Chris Howard had picked up about 11, 12 yards on the plane, enough for the first down. Ball resting to the 33-yard line. Man will go in motion. Will be Howard this time. And there's a snap and the handoff, pick up of a couple of yards, and popping up out of there. You know, he's number 33, Jesse Forrest. They're working, uh, they're working that right side, uh, right into the sideline there. They're on the right hash mark, and and uh, all of their plays have gone that way. They've they've run the ball, uh, and and I don't know why. I don't, uh, I don't think I'd want to be running a Jason Hicks. <laughs> <laughs> it's gonna set up a second down seven from the 36-yard line. Paulie barking out the signals. It's gonna go off, go to another handoff to Howard. Howard's gonna pick up maybe a yard. That offensive line is left tackle number 68 Aaron Brown. He's at 225. The guard on the left side is Ron Niedemeyer. 6 foot 190 pounds. Center is Kevin Siefker. 6'1", 225. Craig Bowers, number 73 is the guard. 5'8", 170. Right tackle, 6'2", 220. The junior, Greg Verhoff, number 50. Tied in is Mike Sauter, number 25. 6'2", 170 pounds. A split end. Number 27, Mark Bunn, 6'3", 175 pounds. Junior. Well, they got wide outs here to the left side now, into the wide side of the field. On a third and seven play from the 36, they go with the pitch and look at the defense for Bluffton. Up there, number 35, you saw Nick Amstutz. Let's set those linebackers. Mike Kinn, 83. Josh Schneer, 33. Amstutz, you saw him get a hit in there, number 35. Brandon Best, number 23. Tyler Biesecker, the cornerback with Josh Unterbrink. Biesecker, 81. Unterbrink, 3. And Dan Barth back there at the safety position. He is number 80. And it's time now for the Bulldogs to punt. And leading the charge in there was Jason Hicks. And I mentioned before they were running to him. No, they weren't. They were running that right side because they were running away from him. Good idea. Punter is number 15, Bill Hartman for the Columbus Grove Bulldogs. Punt 
returners. Fair catch is going to be called for for the Bluffton Pirates by number 29, Lucas Cherry, by the way, who is the backup quarterback in this contest to the offense, now led on the field by Bo Schmutz. Schmutz is number 20. Tailbacks are the running backs are Jeff Powell, and he's a good one. He leads the region over 800 yards rushing. He's number 24, Ryan Burkholder, the other running back, number 32. And this is a wishbone, Coach. Tell us about it. Well, it's a predominantly uh, a running formation, uh, not too many pass plays out of it, but they have broke the bone. They got the uh, they got the wide out. They got the, the right end uh, split out here uh, wide, and uh, and that breaks the bone. Uh, but they're but they're wishbone in the backfield. That means the the fullback is about a yard or two behind the quarterback, and the two halfbacks are set a yard uh, behind the uh, behind the fullback. And of course, it's a it's a triple option offense, which is something that uh, that shouldn't go well with this weather. Well, after the penalty against Columbus Grove, it's going to set up a first down situation. They only need five now from the 39-yard line. 9-13 remaining. No score on the lone zone scoreboard underway first quarter. Going to go up the handoff to number 35, Amstutz. And we've got, again, the running backs, Amstutz, the fullback. And Powell, you're going to hear his name a lot tonight. That offensive line, number 75, Rick Orr. He's at 226. Suter is a left guard at 235. Number 70, the center, Matt Pierce, 6'2", 221. Got some big boys up there. Right guard, 76, Corey Sealing at 209. And Jason Hicks, the tackle, 6'2", 272. Look at him. You can see him on that right side. Second down four from the 41-yard line. Schmutz is going to go with the handoff straight up the middle this time with Powell, the big boy, and he picks up the first down. Yeah, just a straight dive play out of that wishbone right uh, right over the middle. The, uh, the fullback uh, came off his tail, and there's good faking uh, in there by Bo Schmutz. Uh, good ball handling, and in, in these conditions, uh, that's not saying a little bit. Just uh, taking that snap and, and getting the handoff in there is a, is a full-time job, I'll tell you. 53 defense by the Dogs. We'll set them here for you in a second. First and 10 from the 48. Bo Schmutz barking out the signals, looking over the defense. Long count. And finally, he goes with a handoff, and it's going to go to Amstutz. Again, he picks up a couple. Let's set that defense. you got the defensive ends, Dwayne Siefker and Chad Graham. Tackles, Kevin Siefker, number 71, Greg Verhoff, number 50. And the rover tackles, number 61, Ron Niedemeyer. Linebackers, number 81, Kyle Blankmeyer. Middle linebackers, Nate Schaublin. Right outside linebackers, 33, Jesse Forrest. In the corners, Mike Souter, 25, Mark Budd, 27. Safety is number 13, the quarterback, Eric. Palti. Second and six from the 47. There's the handoff again. This time it's to Burkholder. Picks up a couple more yards. Going to set up a third down. Yeah, second man through there. Uh, it was uh, almost uh, an isolation type play. The, the fullback and the right halfback, uh, Amstutz and Burkholder uh, uh, led the way in, and uh, Jeff Powell followed those two in there for short yardage. Now they got a third and about uh, a little shorter than five, maybe. Big, big play here at, at this stage of the ball game. Wishbone offense, as we talked about, in a third down situation. Bo Schmutz goes with a pitch. Going to go with Powell. Powell picks up the first down. He's got one tackler to beat. He may go all the way. It's going to be Jeff Powell with a touchdown for the Bluffton Pirates. The touchdown will come at the 6.52 mark, and it will come from 45 yards out. Jeff Powell, their leading running back, puts him up on the lone zone scoreboard, six to nothing. Yeah, they stayed inside, inside on that uh, on that first series, uh, uh, two plays uh, in up in up inside, and then uh, the quick pitch to uh, Powell. Uh, he broke a tackle, cut back, and outran the Grove secondary there for the score. Also, the king of the homecoming court. That's true. We That's are true. at the Bluffton homecoming tonight. Jessica Baroker was the queen. Jeff Powell, the king. And the king has just scored. <laughs> Brandon Best. It's good to be the king. Oh, yes. <laughs> Brandon Best is going to try the extra point. Good snap. Kick is up, and it will go through. 
The kicker, Brandon Best, the holder, 20, Bo Schmutz. The snap coming from number 70, Matt Pierce. You know, Coach, as you see the rain coming down like this, makes you think, you know, everybody pretty well knew what the forecast was going to be for tonight. And I was talking to some, some Walpaw coaches during the week, and the question came up on whether they use you use a wet ball during practice during the week. Is that something you work with? Yes, sir. You take a, you know, if you've, if you've got a long-range forecast and you're expecting a weather, you just take uh, a bucket of water and a couple balls out there so that quarterback gets a little bit uh, used to handling that wet ball. However, the uh, you have uh, three or four balls in use by each team, and uh, and they're changed uh, every play, and the referees uh, try to keep them covered uh, in between plays. So so the ball, uh, you know, except for the being on the ground and coming up on the snap, uh, uh, anymore they do a real good job of, uh, of keeping the ball relatively dry. Now, as the ball game goes on, those balls become a little waterlogged, and that makes a little, little difference, too. Here goes Best putting the foot into it. It's going to go to number one, and that's Chris McClure. He brings it upfield, and he will weave around a little bit, and finally about three or four Bluffton Pirates are going to take him down. Leading the charge for Bluffton that time was number three, Josh Hunterbrink. And so it's going to be Columbus Grove bringing their offense out, and they're going to try to get something going. A whole host of, a whole host of tacklers uh, in on that good, uh, good coverage, uh, a short run back. Uh, they've got the ball at about the 27-yard line, so uh, Bluffton is uh, is now in control. Let's see what uh, what Grove can do on their second series here now. Yeah, the quarterback is Paulie, number 13. First and 10. Man in motion is going to be Chris Howard. And there goes the handoff, right side. Nice run, looked like Forrest that time with the football, and he's going to pick up about eight yards. Yeah, he was bobbling that ball just a little bit as he came through there. There may have been a little bit of problem on the handoff, but it was a well-blocked, uh, well-blocked play on that uh, on that right side by the Groves uh, by Groves offensive line, and then he picked up a, a good nine yards. And that's what uh, Grove has to do. They've got to try to control that ball, get it in the end zone, even this thing up, and then. Uh, uh, and then and stay right after it. Remember, their fullback Kramer is out of the ball game with a sprained ankle. He was in the top 10 in the region in rushing with about 388 yards after last week's action. Is that play up the middle? Nothing going on there. Is a Bluffton defense solid? Yeah, once again, uh, the, they tried to run the uh, trap up the middle. Now, whether or not it gains a lot of yardage uh, sometimes is immaterial because as you saw him run that sweep in the last series, uh, the reason that went so well was because Bluffton was defending that trap. They are aware of that trap up the middle, and, and that's what makes the offense uh, go with good ball handling by the quarterback. Third down and two situation, 5.30 remaining first quarter, 7-zip Bluffton on the lone zone scoreboard. There goes the handoff again, and it's going to be a first down for the Columbus Grove Bulldogs. Yeah, great effort there. That was great individual effort uh, uh, by uh, Bill Hartman. Uh, uh, just uh, dragging that tackler with him. He knew where he had to get for the first down, and he wasn't going to be denied on that particular play. Sets up a first down, 10 situation. The ball now at the 39-yard line. Eric Pauly goes with the handoff left side, and the defense is there for the Bluffton Pirates again. And just getting back to the line of scrimmage, ball carrier that time as he gets up off the pile. Here again, that play was Forrest. That play didn't uh, didn't develop badly. I think uh, I think Forrest uh, made a little bit of a mistake there. He's cutting it up too soon. He could have uh, could have probably made more yardage had he had he stayed to the outside and really run. He was kind of looking in there. It's going to set up a second down ten. Nothing came there. Still 39 yard line. 4:39 remaining. Man in motion will be Howard, number 26, and they go with the play action back to pass Paulty looking for a receiver nice defensive play by the Bluffton Pirates back there on the defense was number three Josh Unterbrink yeah he uh, Unterbrink made a uh, a nice play on the ball a nice break on the ball and that could have that was within inches of going the other way because uh, he laid that ball out in the flat and there wasn't any protection out there just the receiver and the defender and the defender won the battle but almost won it big with uh, with the interception Paulie came into this game 11 of 25 for 105 yards in passing. 
Three, third down and 11 now from the 37. And there goes the handoff to Howard. Howard works right side, nothing going on again. There's that Bluffton defense. Well, that was a, 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 a great job there by uh, Tyler Biesecker uh, coming up uh, from his uh, outside uh, or cornerback position and, and snuffing that play out. Now Grove is forced to, uh, to punt again and uh, let's see what kind of field position the punt gives uh, uh, Bluffton. Again, it's going to be Bill Hartman, number 15, punting. Yeah. Gets off a nice high kick, spiraling kick. It's going to bounce and go all the way down inside the 30-yard line. And so the Bluffton Pirates are going to have another chance to set up their offense, see if they can get something going, led by their running back, Jeff Powell. Powell, again, over 800 yards rushing this year on 69 carries. Chris Howard, the other running back for Columbus Grove, is in the top 20, 25 so in the region. Came in with about 257 yards rushing. Now we get to see that Bluffton offense again. They're already up seven zip on the lone zone scoreboard. Yeah, it was a good punt, uh, good coverage down there. And uh, and now uh, Bluffton has the ball uh, back of their own 30 and they're in that wishbone. Led by Bo Schmutz, the quarterback. Hand off again, a couple of yards. And the Bluffton Pirates in this kind of weather, Coach, it's going to give it to their big guy, Jeff Powell, let him eat some of that clock up with the lead, 7-zip. Yeah, good job there. I think it was uh, uh, Nate uh, Shoblin, uh, the middle linebacker position, stepping in and, and making a hit on, uh, on the Bluffton fullback there for a short yardage, maybe two. Second down, eight ball from the 31-yard line. Schmutz takes the snap, goes with the option this time. He's going to keep it. He tucks it under his arm. He gets by one tackler and finally is knocked out of bounds and picks up a couple of yards. It's going to set up a third down situation for Bluffton. A good play. It's going to be third and short, and that wasn't an option. I'll have to I beg to differ with you there. That was a uh, you're the coach. That you was do whatever quarter, you want. That was a quarterback keep all the way. Both backs were out in front blocking for him. He had but one option. That was to run that <laughs> ball around the end. <laughs> Way. Congratulations to our our good friend Jeff Hardings from over at St. Henry. He finally signed for the Lions this morning. Of course, he played at Penn State and also played for St. Henry. He will not join the team in Florida this weekend, though. We'll have you some more details as soon as we find out. And there's the handoff again to the big guy, Jeff Powell. He rolls forward, and he's going to be able to pick up the first down again for Bluffton as they continue to roll. Yeah, a little counter trap there. They broke the bone that time by uh, taking the fullback and the other running back, halfback, out of the out on the out on the flank, and then uh, uh, Jeff just made a little jab step to his right, and then cut the back the ball back up over the between the left tackle and left guard on a little counter trap play there, and picked up the first down. Abosh Schmutz hasn't had to pass much this year. Seven of 23 coming into this game for 106 yards. And you got Powell back there. You don't need to. Well, that's just what I was going to say. <laughs> the way they move it on the ground, that's fine. You know a little bit about a rushing game. Hand off this time to Amstutz, the fullback. And he may pick up two. He's going to set up a second and eight. Yeah, Nick just banged off tackle there. Uh, uh, this uh, this kind of weather will hamper, will hamper, I think, the Bluffton uh, option game. Uh, but that play is what sets up uh, the option. That the fullback off tackle, their first man through, handing, handing the ball off for fake. Let's see what they follow with here. Seth Weisenbarger at the bottom of the screen. And now, keeper or option, coach? That was the option, <laughs> right. They, uh, that was the option that time, and, and wisely, uh, uh, wisely, Bo uh, held on to the football rather than pitching it out there. It, uh, he made the fake to the fullback, Amstutz up inside, and then had his, uh, had his halfback, Powell, trailing, but the, he wisely held the ball, but unfortunately, there was no gain. The Grove defense is, uh, is playing uh, this option football pretty doggone on good. Third down and eight from the 42-yard line. We're down to a minute 30 already. Still a steady downpour here from Harmon Field in Bluffton. Seven zip. Bluffton on the lone zone scoreboard. Single back this time. We got some play action with Schmutz. Looking downfield. 
And he will hit a receiver at the 50-yard line. They're going to say it's a catch, and it is right at the stick. They'll have to measure that. I'm, it, it looks good to me, but I, I'm sure they're going to have to uh, measure that. Now, out of the wishbone, that was a little waggle action there, Carl. So, they allowed to run the waggle so, out of the wishbone? Oh, you'll run the waggle out of is everything. Is that right? Yeah, good. I thought that was a wing T thing. Good. <laughs> I've well, learned so much this year, Coach. Well, the wishbone, uh, the wishbone uh, borrows a lot of uh, wing T uh, innovations here. But it was you a make nice up that waggle play? Uh, not really. Huh? Not really. Where'd that come from? I think I got it from Eric Parsegan. Who devised the wing T uh, offense anyway? Oh man, I'd have to tell you a whole long story. <laughs> that goes back. That goes back into the 40s at Is West right? Point, the Blanchard Davis era. So you actually West borrowed Point. that from somebody, huh? Oh, yeah, uh, coaches okay. are great thieves. I heard that. First and ten from midfield, right where we're sitting up here in the press box. Not much on that one. Is that Amstutz again for a couple? Speaking of the press box, I'd like to thank our good friend, the athletic director over here at Bluffton, at Jim Ray. But you have that uh, that uh, what do we have? Brats? A brats. brats Man, and sauerkraut. that brats was good. Did you I'm make that, Jim? You. you make that yourself? Music boosters. Music boosters. <laughs> well, we like to thank the music boosters. Good brats. Jim always does a good job over here. Always takes care of us. I haven't had anything to drink yet, but he usually <laughs> takes care of us. <laughs> are, you, are you hitting? No, I didn't say that. <clears throat> All right, now watch him come with the uh, with the option out of that uh, wishbone again. Second down eight from the 48-yard line. We're under 40 seconds. There goes the pitch, and they're going to go with Powell. And Powell's going to be short of the first down as he's knocked out of bounds. And they're going with what? Has gotten them to quick, where they're at right now. A yeah, quick pitch, pitch there to uh, to Powell, and he comes out there pretty much alone. The uh, the other backs uh, are are faking into the other side of the line, and uh, a quarterback takes a reverse pivot and uh, <clears throat> just flips that ball out there. And when you got a back like Powell, that's a good play. Get him one on one with most anyone, and he's in business. They got a good secondary here for Grove. Mark Bunn already has a couple of interceptions this year. One of the leaders in the region in that area. He's going to set up a third down and three, and they've got about four seconds to get this play off. Bo Schmutz, and we've got no, they don't. a delay of game with just two seconds Boy, you here just, in the first quarter. You just hate that in the uh, in an offense like this. You know, your your best ally is uh, is moving that ball on the ground in short chunks and and then grabbing that big piece. But uh, but now this makes it a little tougher. Third down and about eight now, and that uh, you know that uh, that makes it tough. Uh, I'd, I'd look for some kind of counter action here now out of uh, out of Bluffton. Uh, they set up in their uh, regular wishbone with the uh, end split out wide to the right. Two seconds remaining, first quarter. Schmutz is going to go with the keeper, and he will maybe get back to the line of scrimmage, but needless to say, that's going to end our first quarter. We have played one quarter of action here from Harmon Field in Bluffton. Our score on homecoming night on the Lone Zone scoreboard is Bluffton 7, Columbus Grove 0. You're watching high school football action on Fox 67, W-O-H-L. You can use one of these for an antenna, but there's no way you'll get the best results. Same thing goes for buying the wrong muffler. Unlike discount muffler shops, the auto systems experts at Midas give you a muffler that's made to fit your car, one with our famous guarantee. They know your muffler is a critical part of your exhaust system, and the wrong one can reduce engine performance. You do want it to perform, don't you? Midas auto systems experts, what can we do for you today? If you're looking for great family entertainment, come on out to Westgate or Northland Lane. We've got great food, good times, and lots of fun for kids of all ages. Westgate and Northland Lanes are known for great pizza. Try one after work, after the game, or after the races. Eat in or carry out. Get everyone together and get ready to go. Westgate and Northland let the good times go. It's all right here at Bowling Green State University. BG's facilities for teaching and learning are among the best in Ohio. Students can surf the web or do library research from one of our 25 computer labs or even from our residence hall rooms. And our satellite technology gives you face-to-face -face contact with the world. It's all right here at Bowling Green State University. Ooh. 
The George Michael Sports Machine. Yeah! The greatest hits. Ooh. Run. Error. Action. You can't afford to miss. Up to the minute scores and more. After a full plate of Sunday sports, get your just desserts. The George Michael Sports Machine. Sunday night at 11 on Fox 67. Seven to nothing on the Lone Zone scoreboard. The Bluffton Pirates, after one quarter of action, lead the Columbus Grove Bulldogs. The Columbus Grove Bulldogs come into this contest one and three overall. The Pirates at three and one. That was a nice defensive series by Columbus Grove on that last uh, series of plays. Of course, they were aided by that five-yard delay penalty, but nonetheless, they did a good job of shutting Bluffton down there. Now let's they got one blocked. Blocked by Columbus Grove, and I think they knew they did it at first. Chris McClure got on it. After he blocked the punt, good job by the Bulldogs. They're going to have themselves some dandy field position. Yeah, that's uh, one of our keys to the game here, Carl, is uh, is for Bluffton to win the kicking game, and boy, that's not the way to do it. A nice effort by uh, Columbus Grove there, breaking through and blocking that. Now let's see if they can, can come up with a big play here to put one in the end zone. Now chances are you're going to see, you're going to laugh at me, but I chances are you might see the waggle on this uh, <laughs> on this first play here. They'll they'll try to strike with something quickly, I do believe. Either okay. a waggle or a counter, uh, some uh, unusual uh, play out of their repertoire here. So so let's see what uh, Mike Fell has the boys do here. 92 Zoo Fox 67 tailgate party tonight. The Zoo's Chris Conner and Greg Sheets handing out the mini football sponsored by Myers on Elida Road in your nearby Arby's restaurant. We didn't get a chance to go down and talk to our buddies tonight. No, we didn't. Too much rain. They didn't get here. Here we go. First and 10 for the 28-yard line. Man in motion is Forrest. They will go off the handoff to number 15, Bill Hartman. He'll pick up a couple of yards. Okay, good job there. I expected him to go for it uh, all right after a turnover like that. A good bit of the time you want to you wanna strike while your opponents have their chins down a little bit. But uh, but that's a good play. Picks up about four yards. And, uh, and they're in four down territory, so they don't have to be greedy. They can work it in if they can work it in against this Bluffton defense. Hey, next week, Mike Pruitt's going to be with us, the former member of the Cleveland Browns as we're going to be at Elida again for the Shawnee Elida contest. So make sure to tune in for that one. Second down and seven from the 25 yard line. They're going to go with the handoff this time to P Howard and Howard's going to maybe pick up a yard or so. And that's about it. It's going to set up a third down. Yeah, they ran the sweep, uh, sweep right, pulled, uh, pulled both guards out in front of Howard with the wing back uh, blocking back on the uh, defensive end. And Howard made a nice cut there just to, uh, to pick up a yard because Bluffton, Bluffton defense just flew to that ball. Man, do they run to that football. And that's, uh, you know, that's a sign of great defense. Remember, after the game, we're going to go down on the field for our company 26 Most Valuable Player presentation. Nice T-shirt. It's going to go out to our most valuable player in this game, sponsored by company 26. There's Howard. Look at the defense there by Mike Kinn. Mike Kinn's a big boy. Uh, nice. 6'2", uh, 178. He's a senior. Yeah, nice nice job there by uh, by Mike. He was blocked, and he came up off the ground uh, and, and lunged into, into that tackle. There was a quick pitch uh, by Grove to the to the back side of the formation and uh, and uh, a good alert defensive play by by Mike Kin there just to stop that thing. Now they got a uh, fourth and fourth and long here from the 25 yard line. Let's see what Paulie can do this time for Mike Fell's team looking for the pass has a receiver but it's going to be a little bit high. No flags on the play, so the ball is going to go back to the Bluffton Pirates. No, uh, he, he overthrew him there. He, uh, he was in between two defenders, but but he wasn't what you'd call wide open. He uh, he was going to take a lick as soon as he caught that ball, and uh, the ball was just uh, overthrown. Well, Bluffton, chance for the to have the football again, led by Powell, Amstutz, and Burkholder. Amstutz came in with about 180 yards, Burkholder with about 150. And as we said before, Powell leading the region with over 800 yards already, Coach. And this is only week five. Right, right. He's approaching that 1,000-yard mark, and that's something. It's not too bad at all. There's the handoff. It's going to go to Amstutz this time. He picks up a couple. Well, Amstutz, he rams in inside those tackles there. They use him uh, 
on the uh, on the quick fullback uh, handoff to the fullback, and he hammers, 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 and then they flip that ball to to Powell, and uh, they got everybody all sucked in. Well, that was a golden opportunity he slipped by Columbus Grove there. It's going to be a second down, eight now for the 27. 918 remaining second quarter. Seven zip Bluffton. There's the handoff. Nice defense by the Bulldogs. Yeah, straight dive play there. They used Ryan Burkholder that time for maybe the first time uh, tonight uh, on the dive play. And it looked like he might break it, but it was quickly closed by the alert uh, Columbus Grove uh, uh, defense. Uh, the linebackers and the uh, and the defensive end there did a nice job. Now the rain's slowing down just a little bit. It's not a steady downpour anymore. It's kind of a heavy rain yet, blowing around a little bit more. Rain's not as heavy, I should say. Let's go with the third down and seven now. There's a keeper by the quarterback, Schmutz, and he's going nowhere. And Bluffton, I tell you, Coach, this group defense is playing they, pretty well. They are playing like bulldogs. They sink their teeth in and hold on. And, and that's a good job against this high-powered uh, Bluffton offense. Pit bull, that's uh, what we talked about a couple yep, weeks ago. Yep, pit we bull. Did. We talked about the pit bull, and, uh, and the uh, uh, Grove defense is playing the part tonight. The only score we've had in this ball game is that 45-yard run by Jeff Powell at the 6.52 mark. That's where we're at, 7 to nothing. There's the punt again by the Pirates. This time they get it off. It's going to be taken to the 35-yard line. Out to the 40, 45, and a couple he's of guys to go. beat. He's only got one more guy to he's beat. He's got a Cuts block. Back, and he's going to go down oh, inside. What a great the run back. 30-yard line. What a great run back. A lot of it was done by by himself, but he had one great block over there, and I didn't get the number. It was number 15 who was running at that time, and again, we've called his number out a couple of times tonight for the for the Columbus Grove Bulldogs, Bill Hartman, and he made a couple of good cuts there and took it all the way down. And I tell you, Coach, Columbus Grove has had some good breaks in this game that, with a block punt last time. Now they got good field position well, again. Well, you make your own breaks. Now that time, Bluffton made sure that, that they didn't get into or to block it, but they had the return on it. It was a good one. Well, let's see what the Bulldogs can do with this series. There's the pass play, and Mark Bunn was the intended receiver, and Balti couldn't connect. You know, you got kind of excited on that last play. Well, yeah, first time that, you got that. Well, that was a great, uh, that was a great run back. I like to see kids make great individual efforts. Just a little bit of the coach coming out in you. I guess huh? so. I guess huh? so. I thought it was going all the way. Yeah. I thought you were going to jump out here and go right down the field and start <laughs> coaching again. <laughs> well, you know, I, I know what you'd have I called do, though. I do that from up there. Well, yeah, he's got to call the wagon. <laughs> it's just, it's. Uh, he stay. He, I that, hope they do just so we can get this in yeah, here. Yeah, that time they <laughs> they ran a straight drop back pass. Now the footing may be the problem with the waggle out there. Second and ten. We'll check with Coach Fell after yeah, the game. See what the problem is. He's going to go with the straight handoff this time to Hartman. Looked like it. Bill Hartman. Hard to try. The uniforms are starting to get a little bit muddy. Ramming, yeah, he's ramming right up the middle there. Yep. Good, uh, good job. Good running. Picked up about uh, two, three yards. But they're in a third down situation now. They've got to. They've got to come with some kind of counteraction, uh, or, or, uh, or a waggle. Yeah, any any kind of any kind of counteraction here. Now I think they got to have it. Third and seven for the 24. It's going to be Forrest who will go in motion. And, that's gonna get and they're going to go there with the little There's counter the counter. play, just yep. like you said. It's going to be short of the first down, though, but a little bit closer to picking up the first down. Well, I was looking for a counter a little wider. They came back with the inside counter, and uh, and it picked uh, it picked up good yardage. Now they got an opportunity here with a fourth and, and two. Don't worry about the touchdown. Just get the first down in this situation. And that was Chris Howard carrying the football. You know this Bluffton team is averaging 29 points a ball game. They shut out Corey Ross in 30 to zip as we got a timeout called by Grove. They also shut out Paulding 40 to nothing. And then surprisingly, and as a lot of the fans around here say, and some of the players, maybe they had a little bit of a letdown when they went to take on Spencerville and they ended up losing that game 14 to 12. But they, they showed though, coach, that they're not a fluke because they came back and beat a very, good. very good Jefferson team yeah, big they, time. They were looking past, I think, uh, Spencerville maybe to the to the uh, Delphus game. And, uh, and of course, that the, you can never do that. You know, people laugh at these cliches that coach mouth all the time you know one game at a 
time, one play at a time. But they are uh, they are truisms. There's no no question about it. Are you saying everything coaches say are truism? Truism? Well, yes, sir. Right? They should be written in stone. Uh, <laughs> come on now. <laughs> Football coaches, basketball coach, doesn't matter. I think we know better than that. Come on, Skip. Hey, Sneary's Drive Thru in Columbus Grove is a proud sponsor of local high school sports. Visit Sneary's Drive Thru on Route 65, just south of Columbus Grove, for cold pop, groceries, shell gas, and even a car wash. Sneary's Drive Thru on Route 65 in Columbus Grove, one of our great sponsors here on Fox. Big down for the Bulldogs. It's a fourth and two from the 19. Pauly barking out the signals. Goes with the play action. Pass downfield, wide open in the end zone. Right. Touchdown, Barely. Bulldogs. Nice play by the quarterback, Eric Pauly, as he hits his tight end, Mike Sauter, for the touchdown from 19 yards out. And a gutsy call. That was a counter pass. They, they faked uh, uh, a little scissors play up inside with, uh, with Hartman and with uh, Howard. And uh, a nice job uh, by uh, by Palti holding on to that ball, waiting until everybody was running free and then hit him right on the numbers. Good, good job. Great call. Coach called timeout, came out there and set that up. Uh, fourth and short, gutsy call. Well, Columbus Grove going to have a chance now to tie it all up. It's 7 6 right now, the lone zone scoreboard. They take the extra point and they go into the end zone. Oh, and it's incomplete. Another good one. Another good one there. Boy, he had him wide open. All he had to do was put it on him. It was a direct snap to the to the place kicker, and uh, and the wing back uh, just uh, shot right out there in the flat. And he was wide open. He just missed him with it. Uh, threw it threw it a little too long. He had to dive and couldn't hang on to it. But a good good call. Well, Mike Fell calling a couple of good plays in the last two, and right now his team only trails seven to six in the lone zone scoreboard. And Bluffton's going to have a chance to get the football back. I'd like to remind you to. Tune in next Friday at noon. My guest on the locker room show will be the new head coach of the Lima Locos, and that is Eric Haber, who is a graduate of Shawnee High School, doing some coaching right down at the University of Cincinnati, helping out their baseball program. So make sure to join me, Eric Haber. And maybe we'll get Coach Bachman on next week and start drawing up some of those X's and O's. Yeah, we'll put some of them waggles in. Show the waggle yes, and sir. put that wish watch, 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 watch this, watch this. this watch this. Uh, What's this called? coach well it's not called anything right now they're going to kick it off you guys got names for everything oh Come yeah on. well that was uh you know they were huddling up there and uh the little muddle huddle as well muddle huddle see i was waiting on that mm -hmm. i knew you had something to call it and uh now they're going to kick it off here we go bluffton's going to get the football back bounces around the 15 yard line it's going to be picked up powell trying to cut it finally he's going to be taken down you know Thomas Grove's Chris McClure does a good job down there, Coach. He blocked one of those punts before, and he's down there <coughs> on the kick team again. We got a flag down on the field. I think we may have had a clip on Bluffton over on the other, away from the play, which is really too bad because uh, uh, he wasn't in the play. Yeah, it's a, you know, you could uh, you could uh, grasp kids by the throat when they uh, do something like that. Now that's going to put that's going to put Bluffton in a uh, and it's. It's outside the 30, so it's going to be a full 15 yards, and they're going to be sitting back about inside their 20-yard line now. And you always had your assistant coach through. grasping, though, didn't you, around the neck? You never uh, did that, no, did By you? the face mask. Did by I the face mask. You said no, neck. No, no, I think no, 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 it's no. hard to get to their neck. Uh, Those yeah, necks are not well, well, around their necks big, are. Big shoulder pads. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. <laughs> And, and those guys are pretty big, too. I, I couldn't reach most of them anyway. You grabbed their belt. That's I had, what you did. Yeah, right. I had to say, bend down here, son. <laughs> and I want, sure I want to get a hold on your face mask. <laughs> First and 10 from the 21-yard line. Six minutes, 30 seconds, second quarter. 7-6 Bluffton on the lone zone scoreboard. Here we go. Bo Schmutz, the quarterback. Going to go with the straight handoff. Making the move around the outside is going to be, it's, uh, again, the big Jeff, guy, Powell. Jeff Powell comes out there, follows his blockers real well. He's not a great big guy. And uh, and he does do a nice job of following his blockers. And then he's got that he's got that extra gear that all your great backs have that uh, when that little when that little crack develops, he can accelerate right up through it. Fox baseball on Saturday, it's going to be the Orioles against the Toronto Blue Jays. That still means something, folks. The Orioles still trying to fight for that wild card spot after our tribe has already wrapped up their division. Just waiting on somebody to play. Second and two, 29 yard line. There's the handoff again. 
And looks like Powell's going to get right to the 30-yard line. He's not going to get much there. And I'll tell you what, that uh, Grove defense is playing a very tenacious defense. Uh, in those short yardage situations, they're, uh, they're real tough. Now we got a third down. And you know, the other thing about, the we'll say, what's the difference uh, six inches make? Well, I'll tell you what, on this play, Bluffton could fumble a football or have a penalty or this could, uh, you know, that, that, turn, that may turn out to be a big play. Too. Well, it's third and short, 30-yard line. Let's see if the Pirates can pick up the first down. They're going to go with the handoff, and it's going to be a first the down fumble. there. There's, there's the, fumble. the fumble. And the third yes, break sir. in a row for the Columbus Grove Bulldogs, yeah. and they're going to get the ball back. I tell you what, uh, that's... You've been uh, having premonitions uh, again, Coach. Oh, yeah, I'll uh, tell you. That's uh, that's why that a lot of kids sometimes don't think, well, if they get six inches, they get a first down, so what? No, sir, you, you hang on with your teeth if you have to, to stop that six inches, and good things happen to you, as happened to Grove here. Now, if they can capitalize here, then Bluffton's really got their work cut out for them. Hey, hosting our Myers Arby's tailgate party this week, the zoo's midday personality, Chris Connor and zoo weekender Greg Sheets. That's what we are, weekenders. Greg Sheets, <laughs> broadcasting yeah, sure live from our Fox Game of the Week, handing out our special Fox 67 92 Zoo footballs, the 92 Zoo tailgate party, part of the Fox 67 Game of the Week. Friday nights, 92 Zoo. Now, I wanted to remind everybody, since we've got that Elida Shawnee game next week, and that game is going to be played at Elida, I'd like to remind you that the Elida Alumni Association is going to host a Harlan's Chicken Barbecue, Coach, before that football game next week. We'll Serving to, time, we'll be there. We'll have to get there, yeah. Maybe we'll get a free dinner. Who knows? Serving time between 5 and 7 o'clock. The cost is only 5 bucks. Advanced ticket sales requested. Dinner consists half a chicken, two sides, dinner roll and drink. Tickets are available at the Citizens National Bank, Commercial Bank, and Elida. For many alumni executive member, for more information, you can call 331-7175. Chicken before the big football game. We'll get Mike Prude out there to eat some chicken. I'll bet you. I'll bet you. <laughs> All right, we nope. got we got the wing tee coming up here again now at Columbus Grove. They're playing a, a, a great football game here tonight. First and ten. They've had some breaks in this game so far. Let's see if they can capitalize. There's the handoff again. Oh, That's Howard. My. He had it. Keep your feet, boy. Pick him up. <laughs> Gone. He was running. He was running clear there. If he'd uh, if he'd have just picked up his feet, uh, they're uh, they're playing. I think uh, better than most people expected them to play with all the adversity they've had to overcome this uh, this early season. I think I said that was Howard. They're saying it was Bill Hartman that time, number 15. As they're right in that mud region right now. Second and eight from the 33. Man in motion is going to be Howard. Now they go with a handoff up the middle, pick up of a couple. Yep, he didn't. Uh, they ran the wrong way that time. Uh, and that is Hartman again, the ball carrier. He's six foot, 180 pounds. Howard's six foot, 185. Forrest is 5'10", 175. So they're pretty well rounded back there in that backfield. Yeah, I'll tell you who they ran into, though. They ran into uh, 6'2", 276, uh, Jason Hicks that time. He's an outstanding ball player, that's for sure. He leads the team, at least tied for the team lead in tackles. Third and seven from the 30. 32-yard line. Pauly back to pass. Has himself a receiver. Can't get to it. Oh, almost intercepted there. Good defense back there. Again, we've mentioned his name a couple of yes, times. Sir. Josh Hunterbrink. Hunterbrink uh, had that. It, it looked like he was going to be the receiver on that. I think it went right through his arms. That was uh, uh, He stayed right on the inside shoulder of that uh, uh, receiver. And uh, when he turned, when he turned to look for the ball, uh, so did uh, Josh and uh, it went right through his arms there, but it, he'd have had a big interception. And Bluffton needs something now. They need to stop Grove here. Their confidence is wavering just a little bit. If Grove gets one in here, this, uh, you know, it could be a real shock to their system. Well, it's a fourth down situation from the 32. They need seven to pick up the first down. They're going to go with the pitch and the reverse. A and fake they're going to use a fake reverse. Turn it up. Turn Good it job. up. I tell yes, you, they sir. had me and the rest of the Bluffton defense fooled on that one as a good run. 
Again by Hartman this time for the Columbus Grove Bulldogs. He took the pitch out, and we used to call that a whirl. With the, uh, he he uh, pitched the ball to the fullback. The fullback faked it to the halfback. Uh, the wingback coming around behind him and just he slowed up just a little bit and then tucked it away and made a nice cutback, got the first down. Howard and Hartman in the backfield this time. First and 10 from the 14. Going to go with Hartman this time. Nice hole left side, picks up some good yardage, continues to go forward, finally brought down. I'll tell you what, Bill Hartman can find the cracks there, boy. He came through there. Now we got a flag, a late flag. We got a pers uh, personal foul of some kind here, I'm afraid. Find out what that is. I'd like to remind you, after this game is over, Skip and I will go down on the field with our umbrella, and we'll have the most <laughs> valuable player for you. I'd like to thank the Bluffton cheerleaders helping us out in the pregame show, yes, holding sir. the umbrella for us. Pretty girls. Holly and Becky and... Mm. Yeah. Now, come on, come on, come you on. You remember the other you're, two? You're the guy with Amber, the names. Amber, I, maybe? I remember what they look like. And that is a personal yeah. foul against Bluffton. You remember what they look like. <laughs> you, uh, you know, this is, you know, this is, this is the, Bluffton's showing a little frustration here now. Uh, maybe they expected a little easier time here. But, but Grove is not leaving anything in the playbook tonight. They're, they're letting it all hang out. Uh, and they, uh, you know, they have. And so, boy, they're down inside now this is crunch territory not a very smart uh, not a very smart play by the uh, by whoever made it there uh, uh, for that personal foul not a good thing you and can't help your team doing that stuff and they're Fullback Kramer's out with a sprained ankle for the Columbus Grove Bulldogs, so they're basically doing it right now with Hartman, Howard, and Forrest, and for a backup role for Hartman, he's doing a nice job. Yes, sir, I guess he is. First and goal from the five. 3.06 remaining, second quarter. Paldy is going to go with the handoff. Up the middle, Hartman. touchdown, Hartman, Hartman's Columbus Grove. Yes, sir. I'll tell you what, they'll find a regular spot for that youngster next week. <laughs> he That's won't for be sure. a backup anymore. Five yards out for the fullback Bill Hartman at the 258 mark of our second quarter and now the Grove Bulldogs up 12 to 7. Big uh, big score there, big uh, touchdown. Now now Bluffton has to regroup here a little bit and get their uh, and regain their poise. They lost a little bit of their poise there for for a little bit, and uh, there's a lot of time left in this football game. So uh, you know, let's see how they handle it. Well, they've got a five point lead right now, so they're going to go for two, and that's going to be Forrest in motion, Baldy. He's going to go this time to the other guy, Howard, and Howard will not make it into the end zone. He slipped down, but that was very good defense by Bluffton there. They were there. He wasn't going to get into that end zone. Those kids weren't going to let him in. Now they got to regroup here, Bluffton does, and uh, you know, get, their, get their gear together here now. And you know, this scores for the Columbus Grove Bulldogs, if you remember the blocked punt and then the fumble. And in between there, there's also a good kick return, and Columbus Grove's had some very good opportunities, Coach, that they have been able to capitalize well, I'll on. I'll tell you what, we've watched most of this football game on Bluffton's side of the 50. And, you, you know, if you, if you can get that ball on the on your opponent's side of the 50, you don't have to very far to go. So uh, so let's see uh, let's see what happens here now. Let's see if, Grove can put, or, uh, if Bluffton can put a drive together. Grove is going to be at McGuffey next week against Upper, and Bluffton will be at Lima Central Catholic next week take on the T-Birds. Yeah, I think uh, Bluffton's seen this a time or two. They're not being fooled by that muddle huddle in there and uh, and we're going to get a we're going to get a deep kick although they're up uh, they're up awful close. The uh, the deep men for uh, Bluffton. Brandon Best puts the foot into it. And Powell's not going to get it this time. Instead, it's going to be picked up around the 10 yard line and taken past the 20, 25, 30. And that's about where they're going to set up their offense. First and 10 for Bluffton. Nice, uh, nice run back there by uh, number 29, uh, Lucas uh, Cherry. Good job. He did a little stutter step and decided he couldn't go outside one way, couldn't go outside the other way. And so he just went right up the chute and, and got, a, got a pretty doggone good return back up to the 30-yard line. Now let's see if they can uh, get that wishbone operating on all uh, cylinders. Brett Richards at the bottom of your screen. First and 10, 28-yard line with 2.52 remaining second quarter. 
That's Bo Schmutz, goes with the pitch this oh, time. Burkholder's got some running room, and he's brought down past the 30-yard line, about to the 33. What a block there by Jason Hicks. He pulled out of his tackle position and led that sweep and just pancaked uh, his defender. What a great, great job. And that's what they have to do. They got to run behind him. Second down, four from the 34. 225, time ticking away. As the Bluffton Pirates trying to get back into this one as they trail 12 to seven. Deep there pitch that again. time to Powell's. Got some running room. There he is again, okay. And there's some good defense by number 27. And that's Mark Bunn, the cornerback. I think he might have been the only guy near Powell that time. Coach, it could have stopped him. And here again, Jason Hicks is flip-flopping from, uh, from side to side, from tackle to tackle. He pulled out of the line that time and led that pitch out sweep uh, with uh, Powell uh, carrying and, uh, and and once again got a got a key block on the play. First and 10 from the 41-yard line. Bo Schmutz, the quarterback, out of the wishbone. Going with a handoff straight up the middle and looked like they went to Burkholder again. Ryan is 5'10", 160 pounds. He's one of the running backs for this Bluffton offense. Yeah, Ryan picked up short yardage on that play just a uh, uh, just a straight uh, straight dive to the halfback there, and they haven't run Amstutz much uh, in this in this drive. Second down eight, and there's the pitch again. Bluffton going with it. They're going to go Burkholder, and Burkholder yes, picks up a few more yards. Going to be short of the first though. Here again, I, mean, I hate to I hate to keep repeating myself, <laughs> being redundant, but but old. Uh, Old uh, Mr. Hicks there, 71, was out in front of that play again. I think a good key would be when it's a crucial down, see where Hicks is playing, which side. Now he's on the right side this time. Let's see if they go that way. Third and four, this time for the 48-yard line. This time it's going to be a straight drop back pass. Looking downfield, it's going to be knocked down. It's intercepted. And the flag goes down as well, even though, well, they're going to say it was no interception anyway. Well, I think there's going to be an interference call there. He did hit the receiver just a mite early, but he threw that one up. And, you know, this is not a good night for uh, for throwing the ball unless you got people wide open. But, you know, Coach, I think the rain has almost stopped. Yeah, it has, but uh, but there's no sunshine. That mud hasn't dried up any, I'll tell you. So, so here's, a, here's a big break. Now, it seemed as if uh, Bluffton had all the breaks early in the – or not Bluffton, but Columbus Grove had all the breaks early in the ball game. Now, here's a big break for uh, – for Bluffton, and let's see if they can capitalize on it now. Remember, following the conclusion of the game, Company 26 and Printed Sportswear will present a uniquely designed screen-printed T-shirt to the Fox 67 Most Valuable Player. Company 26 and Printed Sportswear, they are located in the Gomer Mall, the corner of Lincoln Highway and Gomer Road. First down and 10 for Bluffton as they're trying to take the lead. Minute remaining, second quarter, they trail 12 to 7. They broke the bone. It's a one-back attack. And they will go play action. Schmutz looking downfield. Has a receiver wide open, but he drops the football. That was number 23, Brandon Best. Yeah, it was right. Hit him in a bad place, right in the hands. <laughs> uh, it was a good throw. It was, a, it was a waggle action again now, Carl. He made I saw that. that. Well, you know that. He made that fake in there. He only had one back there, but he Let's wrote, get the telestrator out. Yeah, you show bet that you we one. need that. we got to get a telestrator. He, uh, he stuck that ball, old Bo did, right in, uh, in uh, Powell's uh, belt and rode him into that line a little bit pulled it back and reversed himself and put the ball right in the receiver's hands. First and 10 still. But it goes for naught. 55 seconds. Here play action again. Here comes the defense and brought down by number 51, and that is Nate Shoblin. Yeah. Big Nate, sack uh, for the Bulldogs. Nate was blitzing on that play. Good good call by the defense there. Uh, call that blitz in the second down and long. And uh, and now uh, they've taken they've taken Bluffton almost out of four down territory, but that clock's ticking off now. I tell you, Coach, this has been a game of timing. You yes, look sir. at the block punt, you look at the fumble. You look at that nice kick return. You look at that sack. Key plays in this game has allowed, you got to say, coming into this game, as banged up as Columbus Grove is, and also Bluffton has some problems with injuries, but Grove, the underdog, and one thing you said, that in weather like we had to start this football game out, sometimes the favorite is the underdog. Yes, sir. Mud is a great equalizer, I'll tell you that. And uh, But uh, to their credit, uh, uh, Columbus Grove is playing uh, real tenacious 
this defense and uh, and let's see if they can sustain that effort over the, the next 24 minutes. Let's and then of course if Bluffton with 30 seconds left to go on the clock, if Bluffton could manufacture a score here, then that would change the whole complexity of things going in at halftime at the locker room. A lot of time left in this ball game. Got a whole half yet, plus 30 seconds second quarter. But it's now a third down and 21 from the 47-yard line. And they broke the bone here. They got a, a slot formation out to the right. Bo Schmutz back to pass. Looking downfield for receiver. Has none. Blitz. Keeps it himself. Got some running room. Out past the 40, 35, 30. And two guys will bring him down, and he's going to be close. Yeah. Let's see where they mark him. He's going to be short. No, he's going to be short. But it's only, uh, it'll only be third down, I think, won't it? Yep. Well, it should be. It was a third, third down. down and 21. Yeah, and, uh, but, yeah, it's uh, close. Boy, it's yeah, close. it was closer than what it looked like from yeah, here. Yeah, right. I didn't think he was, I didn't think he was that uh, close. They're, they got a, Bluffton's got a timeout now with, uh, with 20 seconds to go. Coach is going to come out and, and uh, first of all, he's going to question the officials. He wanted a <laughs> measurement, and I don't blame him. I don't blame him. Doggone it. Well, the clock has it as a first down. Oh, now, oh, now they're now they're motioning there we the go. first down. Okay, that's he didn't want to. He, he, that's what he wanted to know. A little miscommunications, yeah, always. Let's, let's get, get those stick going, guys in order. Hey, we got a couple of good games coming up on Sunday on Fox. You know, Fox is the station to watch if you're watching any type of football. We've got the Minnesota Vikings at the New York Giants. And that's a one o'clock start, and then the Green Bay Packers. This is a tentative game scheduled scheduled now. Green Bay Packers at Seattle to take on the Seahawks. That's a four o'clock game as well. And if you didn't hear me the first time, Jeff Harding of St. Henry, the number one draft choice of the Detroit Lions, has signed with the Lions. He did that this morning. Did he get a million? Uh, details. No details here of the contract. I think they didn't have that much to give him. They only had like five hundred thousand. Uh, I know. I, know. I, I wouldn't play either for five hundred thousand dollars. I think he ought to get a new agent. <laughs> first what and a, ten. What a great football player he is. Uh, he deserves for better. Sure. Back to pass there much. Here. Oh, well, nice block. Oh, and now he dropped the football. The Who's going to get on it? Columbus Grove there. Got they it. got the football. Yes, sir. Dog. Man. Ten seconds. Make it 11 seconds remaining. And Bluffton and back to pass was Bo Schmutz. And there was that fumble, the second fumble we've seen in the contest. Well, you know what? Bo raised that ball to throw it. It just slipped off his hand. He just couldn't grip the thing. That's, uh, that's where this weather becomes an equalizer with the... Uh, with a good team uh, right now with the brakes going going against uh, Bluffton. But uh, boy, you got to hand it to this Columbus Grove outfit. They've pulled out all the stops this first half. Let's see what Eric Pauly does with 11 seconds. He will take the knee down and we'll go into the locker rooms of the half good. with good Columbus move. Grove leading the Bluffton Pirates on the Lone good Zone move. scoreboard by the score of 12 to seven. Hey, We're gonna take it. It's a, ball game oh, it's a dandy ball game just like we expected. So we'll take time out. We've got our Van Dyne Karate halftime show coming up next on Fox 67 WOHL. Attention, the general sales manager of Ford Motor Company has challenged Mike Pruitt Ford, sell 200 new and used vehicles before the end of the month. <coughs> Oops. With Van Dyne Crotty, you don't just get uniforms, you get a choice. Van Dyne Crotty, uniforms that work. the sights and the sounds of the Bluffton Pirates marching band. Although the rain coach is starting to come down again. Right, we had a couple of minutes there at the end of the second quarter where we didn't have the rain. As we talked in the pregame show as the rain was coming down then, that rain may be a factor and it has been so far. Yeah, I, uh, uh, I don't think there's any doubt that going into the game we had to consider uh, Bluffton as the, as the favorites uh, in the football game. And uh, the the rain has not uh, has not worked in their favor like we thought it might. Uh, they being a ball control football team. Well, let's look at those keys of the game that we talked about at the beginning, coach, and let's see how they've turned out. Well, starting. Uh 
Bluffton has not uh, been able to establish uh, their running game for any with any consistency. Uh, they've had flashes, but uh, but not a lot of consistency. Uh, they uh, uh, Grove has not tried a lot of misdirection plays, so that would be a non-factor. And uh, to this point, uh, 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 Bluffton has not uh, capitalized on the kicking game like we thought they might. They had a bl uh, a blocked punt, and uh, and that uh, got him into trouble. About gave up a score on the Columbus Grove side of things. Uh, they they didn't have any turnovers. The turnovers all came the other way. They were able to control the ball. They were able to control the ball on their opponent's side of the 50. That was very important. And uh, and at the end of the uh, the half, when it looked like Bluffton had something going, Grove did force him with uh, with a couple blitzes there got him uh, in long yardage situations and forced Bluffton to uh, throw the football which uh, which we thought would be a, a factor in uh, Grove's favor and it was okay and Columbus Grove has played a very good first half and we'll see how Bluffton responds as they come back out here in just a couple minutes for third quarter play our halftime show has been brought to you by our good friends at Van Dyne Crotty of Delphus uniforms that work going to take another time out when we return we've got third quarter action for you on Fox 67 WOHL. Hi, this is Todd Walker, host of the magazine show here on Fox 6. Action where the Lone Zone scoreboard right now says Columbus Grove 12 and Bluffton 7. Coach, for the first time this year, they haven't stuck that extra three minutes up on the scoreboard. Both uh, teams ready to go. Well, it's raining out there. They want to <laughs> get this thing underway, I believe. They're... Uh... The officials don't have their rain suits on, so. <laughs> this is homecoming night over here at Bluffton. Jessica Baroker picked the queen, and Jeff Powell, the running back for Bluffton, the king of the homecoming court. Columbus Grove to start off the third quarter is going to get a chance to kick off. It's going to be Chris Walker, number two, for the Columbus Grove Bulldogs kicking off to the Bluffton Pirates. It's going to be touched at around the 30-yard line, finally picked up, and bowling forward is going to be, again, number 24, Jeff Powell. Look at him oh, spin boy. through across midfield down to the 45-yard line. You always see that, too, don't you, Coach? Oh, yeah, every time there's some kind of mix-up or hesitation, I know uh, I know Coach Lee, that lineman that jumped up and tried to grab that ball, he'd jump up and grab him, but it worked out well. Uh, Jeff picked that ball up and brought it out over across midfield, so Bluffton now starts with great field position. Jeff came into this game averaging about 12 yards per carry. And this is week five of the high school football season. The Bluffton Pirates trying to take that lead back from the Bulldogs. Going to go off the handoff straight up the middle. And that's going to be Powell, and he picks up about five. No, that was uh, number 29 there. Uh, He's in a different guy. Right. Uh, that's Lucas Cherry. Right. Well, we didn't see that much in the first half, so we'll have to keep our eyes open here. Cherry is in the backfield now with Powell, so Burkholder is out. They've got Amstutz in at the fullback. And they're going to go right side this time, and that is Powell, and he picks up a couple. Yeah, he uh, it was just a straight dive uh, right over the uh, right side of the line there, and uh, and he picked up short yardage but valuable yardage. They're now in a third and, and a four situation, and uh, in this weather, they may well be in uh, four down territory. Well, the rain has started again. It's a little bit heavier than it was at the end of the second quarter. It's third down and three from the 41-yard line. Schmutz hands the football off, and it's going to be short of the first down this time. I don't think he got. Now, there, here's, a, here's going to be an interesting call. Uh, do you punt that ball and try to try to kick Grove down deep, or do you go for that fourth and, uh, uh, let's see, one, two, three. Uh, I, I think they'd be uh, pretty smart maybe to punt the football and punt them back there deep if they could and take their chances. But I think they're going to go for it. Yep, that's what they're going to do on a fourth down and short. Well, you think it's going to be Jeff Powell? Well, they've got Burkholder back in this time with Powell and also the big guy, Amstutz. Fourth and two. 
And they will choose the pitch to Powell, and he's going to easily pick up that first down on the pitch right. Boy, he starts from a dime and leaves you nine cents change. <laughs> I'll tell you, he can, he can fly. That's a, a good call. Uh, they, uh, they went for it and made it there, and, and now they're definitely in four-down territory. Uh, and we'll see there. They're moving the ball on the ground just like, uh, like we thought they could. Mike fell for the Bulldogs in his seventh year. Dennis Lee for the Pirates in his tenth year. Both outstanding coaches. First and ten from the 33. There's a pitch left side with Burkholder. Burkholder tripped up, or he might have picked up about five, ten more yards. Well, he got five, so they got uh, a couple more downs, three more downs to get that other five yards. That's a, a quick pitch there to the outside, uh, and uh, they're they're pulling that. Uh, they're pulling Hicks in front of the uh, in front of the pitch out sweep, and uh, and that fellow makes things happen when he's out there in front of you. Fox 67, 92 Zoo salute the cheerleaders of the week. This week, the girls from Bluffton, all part of the 92 Zoo Fox 67 game of the week. Special hello to the Columbus Grove cheerleaders, soon to be cheerleaders of the week, sponsored by our friends at Arby's and Limas Power Hits 92 Zoo. Second and five from the 27-yard line. They're going to go with the handoff to Powell again, and he's going to pick up a couple, but they're going to be short of the first. Once again, just a straight dive play in there. They're not doing anything fancy. They're just wearing on, uh, on Columbus Grove at this particular point in time, just going right at them with a couple sweeps mixed in, and uh, they're, they're getting good results. You don't always have to have that 25-yard run. Uh, sometimes that three-yard is just as valuable. Third and three from the 25. Schmutz going to go with the handoff again, and he bowls forward. It's going to be, well, we're not going to try to call that one. It's right at the stick. We're going to have to wait and see here, but he sure, he sure flew in there. He runs that dive just like you want a halfback to run it. There's no looking, no hesitation. Just a uh, straight line in there, and he's got fourth and short. Skip and I are going to be in Elida again next week as it will be Shawnee at Elida in Western Buckeye League play. Mike Pruitt from Lima Pruitt's Lima Ford going to be with us, former player for the Cleveland Browns, going to help us out. Well, it's a fourth down situation, and short from the 24, they're going for it again. This time they'll go with the big guy, Amstutz, the fullback, and he's going to pick up the first down. Yeah, he rammed right over right tackle there and uh, and got the, got the job done. Uh, right behind, I think that time, Rick Orr. I think Rick Orr led the blocking on that particular play, and they picked up the first down. Big, uh, big, big play, and they're moving consistently now. Controlling the ball, that's for sure, here to start out this third quarter. They've already eaten up about four minutes. First and 10 for the 21. Going to go with the handoff on the counter, and it's Powell with some good running room, and he's close to another first down. Yeah, nice uh, nice job there. A good deception on the play. Uh, just that wishbone counter play where, uh, where uh, Jeff Powell just took a little jab step to the outside, let his full back clear, and then come in off his tail over the, the left guard position. Moving the ball down the field like a machine. No turnovers. This Bluffton offense can show you what they're all about here on a first and goal to go from the or their first, second, and one from the 12. That's Powell again, and he's going to pick up short yardage, but it looks like another first down for the Bluffton Pirates. Yeah, when you have a cannon, no sense in firing a BB gun. <laughs> Shoot it off in there, and he's doing that. He's going right after him. Hey, after this game is over, Skip and I are going to get out on the field for our Company 26 and Printed Sportswear MVP presentation. A lot of candidates for this game so far. First and 10. First and goal. It's right at the 10 yard line. And there is the handoff again. Looked like maybe there was there. a fumble. fumble in there. Did, did oh Grove my. get it again? This would be a big turnover if Columbus Grove picks it up. No, no Bluffton no, no. got Bluffton's it. He's got the ball. Big break for the Pirates. Yes, sir. Hold on to that ball. You don't shoot yourself in the foot down here, boys. Second in goal now. 
that's still what, right at the 10. That's a tenacious uh, bulldog defense there of uh, Columbus Grove. And in that 5-3 defense they're in, that's, uh, you know, that's almost uh, setting the table for, for Bluffton. But boy, as well as they play it, uh, they cover all the gaps. See what happens now in a second down. Seven minutes remaining third quarter. Bo Schmutz, the quarterback. He's going to go to the handoff to Powell again. There's that defense, Coach, you're talking about. Only a couple of yards for Jeff Powell. Yes, sir. Those are tough, tough yards down in there. Now they'll now they'll they'll come out with uh, they got a uh, they pick up about a yard maybe so so they got uh, at least seven yards I can't see those chain yeah seven you know nine yards they say to go on the clock there and we tell you who's making all these tackles up front but their uniforms well, we are so soiled that we dirty it's we tough we can't read that that's tough right but we know we got Seifker Seifker Niedermeyer Verhoff and Graham in that front line. And they're doing a great job. Third and goal from the eight. Schmutz, keeper, spins. There's the hand. Look at the reverse play, and it's going to be into the end zone. Touchdown, Brett Richards. Yeah, just he had everybody fooled, coach. Yeah, it was an end around there. He was the wide out uh, out on the out on the left side, and uh, they started all the action uh, to the left. He was coming back. The pitch was made. Looked like it was going to uh, Jeff Powell, but uh, uh, Brett Richards ran right into it and, and took it around the right side and into the end zone. Good call. Good play. Good play. Call by head coach Dennis Lee. He had to have good eyes to catch that one right away. That's for sure. He had all but one, all but one defender fooled, and and uh, but he had a blocker in his face. Well, you kick it here and you only get one. That puts you ahead only by two and you can lose it. So they're probably going to go for two here. Make it a 15-12 game. But they're going to call a timeout and think about it first. What do you think, Coach? Well, I don't know whether they're going to worry too much about field goals under these conditions. Uh, they, they, they had the ball placed on the hash mark, which is their option. So uh, it would it would seem that uh, that they're going to that they're going to uh, run to the uh, wide side of the field or the open side. However, that could also mean they want that uh, that football on the grassy part of the field if they're going to kick it. It's not, you know, a hash mark isn't too much of an angle. But my guess would be they're going to go for two here, and they're going to. They're at least going to give Columbus Grove the illusion that they're going to go to the to the right side of the field. They got the formation set. Uh, they got the formation set to the right. And they've got Amstutz and Burkholder in the backfield. Where's Powell? He's hiding somewhere. <laughs> Schmutz. Trying to pick up two, they go to Burkholder. He tries to cut it inside and he goes down. Yes, sir. I don't. I didn't see they, Powell out on I, that play. I, I don't think. I think they had ten minutes. No, he's on the, on the he's he's on the side of the sidelines right now beside the coach. Yeah, well, they only had the one half back in there then. And it looks like Jeff's not too happy. Get the ball. Well, they still uh, they still went into the lead, and that's a great uh, that's a great boost for their confidence. Now we'll see uh, we'll see if Columbus Grove can come back now, uh, like they did after that first Bluffton score. It's a very well played ball game uh, under the under the conditions. Uh, the rain has let up again, and uh, and they're getting set to uh, to kick off. Let's see if they do anything on the kickoff. Like a short kick or an onside kick. Columbus Grove's playing back pretty deep. Brandon Best is going to be kicking off. And back deep for the Columbus Grove Bulldogs. Yeah, a pooch kick would not be a bad uh, bad move in this situation. Chris McClure, one of them back there, number one, and he's been handling the ball most of the time for Footing, but they're, Columbus they're, Grove. They're giving a lot of respect uh, to the kicker here. Best gets the foot into it, and we've got a flag, and it goes right to McClure. We've got an offsides here on uh, Bluffton, it appears. Yep, the officials telling the bench which which young man was the culprit on that particular play. <laughs> you always wanted to know, didn't you? Oh, yeah. Hey, what's wrong with you? 
Let's hey, be sure to catch the Arby's Fox 67 scoreboard tomorrow morning. 92 Zoo with Kyle Hoffer during the Rick D's weekly top 40. Not only Lima's power hits, but all the area high school scores. Tomorrow morning on Lima's power hits, 92 Zoo. Rain is still coming down. We've only had one time in the ball game where it actually slowed, and that was towards the end of the second quarter. Halftime was nice. And nice. They didn't have any football <laughs> players out here then. No, though. that's right. Well, let's try it again from the 35. Six minutes and two seconds remaining, third quarter. The kick's going to go to McClure again at about the 12 yard line. He picks it up and runs forward, and he's going to get nailed. No, 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 no. That's one thing you don't do is tippy toe around <laughs> uh, trying to figure out where to go. You better know. Well, the and, offense uh, is going to come back out for Grove, and this coach is a big point in the ball game for them. They got to get a drive. Well, the way that uh, Bluffton uh, Pirate uh, kickoff team covered there, uh, they got a real shot in the arm with that score, and uh, they're going to be be tough to handle now. I think Mark Bunn is split wide on a first and ten from the 24. 5.56 remaining third quarter. The quarterback is Eric Palti. Man in motion is Howard. They go with the drop back, the pass downfield, and it's going to be short. And there's going to be a oh boy, flag on the field. Let's see which way they call think, that Well, one. it's going to be interference on Bluffton, but boy, I don't know about that call. Well, he was coming back for the football. It was short. Mm -hmm. and the officials talking to one another. This is how Columbus Grove started the football game out. They're going to call it against Columbus Grove. They're going to say, I think that Bunn pushed off coming back for the yeah, ball. I guess you're right. I guess that is what uh, the call was. I know there was some contact there, but it was almost incidental. I don't know whether a flag should have been thrown on, uh, on either uh, young man right there. Well, Dennis Lee is, is clapping towards the officials. Of course, he's uh, happy oh, yeah. with that one. Oh, yeah. Boy, they're closest to his bench. <laughs> you get the word in there. Now, now poor, poor Mike over on the other side. There, now, nobody listening to him. Come on over here, guys. And the play's away from him, so he really can't see what uh, what went on. But his coach is up here in the press box, are informing him. I'm sure. No, that wasn't. A, that wasn't a, a push off there. He just turned him back to the ball. That was defensive interference. And saying a few other things as well. Yeah, and officials can't win in 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 that case. You know they're. Yeah. They're going to be 50% wrong, you know, if because uh, over on that Grove side of the field, they're they're not buying it, and and, uh, and Bluffton uh, fans are applauding him. Well, it's taking them a while to figure well, this one out, though. All the kids are telling the captain they're all pointing to take the penalty. I don't see what the coach is doing. <laughs> I can't see what the coach is doing, but he's getting a lot of help there. A lot of fans out here to this ball game tonight with their umbrellas, of course, and we got to give a special hats off to our camera guy down there, Skip. Oh, boy. Good old RK, Ronnie Coons, in his orange, or rather yellow, yellow school bus evening wear again. Ron's he right had on, to wear it. He's right on top of it there, boy. He's got it, he's got it zoomed in. He's got his umbrella. I like how he holds his umbrella and the camera at the same time. That's just amazing. He does a pretty good job there. It's going to be a second down and about 21. Ball resting on the 13-yard line. Man in motion. Little little run and shoot situation here, but he gives it to the fullback. Uh, right, and again, that's Bill Hartman, and he goes nowhere. He was spreading them all out there, trying to uh, trying to lull them into Bluffton into thinking he was going deep, and uh, he wanted to get his fullback into that secondary, but Bluffton wasn't buying any of it. That was Mike Kinn again, and on the tackle for Bluffton, he's at outside linebacker. We got a, we got some uh, clean jerseys in there for Bluffton right now. Third and 20, ball at the 14. Man in motion again. This time it's going to be Hartman. They're going There's to go the trap. trap up the there, middle. There's there a it nice is. run there and out, cut into the outside. That's Hartman. Yes, the man in motion sir. was not Hartman. And he's going to pick up the first down. I tell you, third down and 20, and Columbus Grove pulls it off. Yeah, runs a, runs a trap. Great call. That's just what, that's the only play they, you know, they should call in that situation. Third and long, you're looking past, and you slip that, pop that fullback right through there, and he picks up the first down. Now, there was a big play on that interference call, and uh, and doggone it if these Columbus Grove kids haven't overcome it. They're, uh, they're a moxie bunch. They, uh, they stay right after it. Talk about a clean jersey. Tony Roberts tackle in there, number 54. 
Yeah. Still got a little bit of. I know. I, whenever I saw a clean jersey like that, I was figuring out Tone wasn't doing the job. <laughs> well, Aaron Brown was the starter. At least yeah, that's I what know. we had originally. You don't want the 54 yeah. to be your starter and still have a clean jersey, no, no, do you? That's what I'm saying. Right. <laughs> First and 10 from the 34. That is Howard in motion. They're going to the handoff the up the middle again. there. There it is again. Nice He's run. Go. It's Hartman. He cuts it to the outside of the 40, and there's a flag. Oh, man, we got a clip, I think, on the Bill play. Hartman, yeah. who's had himself an outstanding ball game, had a nice run, and the flag is down on the field. Bill Hartman runs that trap pretty doggone well, and, and, and of course, he couldn't run it if... Uh, if if uh, Kevin Seifker and Craig Bowers and Ron Niedemeyer weren't doing the job up there in front along with uh, Greg Veroff and, and Aaron Brown. Right now, they're, and they're overcoming a lot of odds here. Well, they're talking again to the defense, the Bluffton Pirates, and talking to Jason Hicks, the big guy, the tackle, 6'2", 272 senior. And they're going to bring this one back. And that's going to be from the point where the clip occurred, so it's still going to be a first down for Columbus Grove. Now they called it a hold. He must have grabbed the hold okay. in there. Yeah, it wasn't. A, it was only a five-yard penalty. There It was an offensive use of the hands, and uh, and that's a lot better than than 15 because they're across that 50 and they're moving. Remember, Skip and I are going to be the Elida next week. Shawnee Elida, Mike Pruitt will be with us as well. First and ten from the 46 yard line out of that wing T in motion Howard backs are split they go to the handoff and it's going to be Forrest that time and he picks up a couple I tell you Bluffton uh, was not fooled a bit uh, on that play they brought the man in motion across hoping to get uh, to get the Pirates to to shift down with that man in motion but that uh, right side of that defensive line and those and those uh, right side linebackers uh, stayed right at home and made a nice read on the play and and wrapped it up. Uh, uh, Nick Amstutz and and Brandon Best uh, were were right there to meet the meet the play. Second down nine for the 46 yard line. We're under four minutes third quarter. It's still 13 to 12. Bluffton on the lone zone scoreboard. Baldy. Handoff. There it is. Right side. It's going to be Powell Atta making boy. his cut. I'm sorry, Howard making his cut and picks up some good yardage again. And Columbus right. Grove doing a good job they're, of sustaining this drive. They're moving that ball. They're running. They're running what we used to call a 60 series, and boy, they're running it well. And and on that particular on that particular play, Chris Howard waited for his guard to get out there in front of him, and then made the cut off his block. Good job of running. Let's see what they do on a first and 10 from the 34. That was one of your keys, Coach, of keeping the Columbus Grove holding on to that football and keeping it out of the hands of the Bluffton Pirates. That's right, but but you know they're behind. They got to get a, They got to get some points on the board, or it'll all go for naught because they're not ahead in this ball game anymore. But the momentum seems to have changed again. First and 10 from the 34. Eric Palti, the quarterback, the goes trap, trap up the uh, middle to Hartman. That time it didn't open up for him, and he picks up a couple. No, that, uh, that was read uh, pretty well in there by uh, Luke Sutter. He, uh, he sat right on that thing. He wasn't having any of it this time. It's a nice interior line on the defensive side when you got Hicks at 272, Suter at 235. Yes, sir. And Rick Orr is not a little guy. He's 226 of the defensive end spot. And then you got Eric mm -hmm. McCoy, who does look little compared to those guys at 184. Right. Second and eight from the 33 now. Man in motion. It's going to be Howard. And they will go to Hartman this time, and he will pick up maybe one, two more yards, and it's going to set up a third down. Not much. He's going to have to go back and pull one out of the playbook again here now because uh, look for that little counteraction uh, pass. Uh, in here about this time uh, they're they need a big play here now about seven yards and Justin Kramer is their regular fullback he is injured came in with 388 yards coming into this week but he is out with a sprained ankle but the guy filling in for him Bill Hartman's been doing a great job Paulie wants a little slant and stepping in front of it to the defender and almost picked it off 
No, sir. Now you got fourth down, and and, and of course they're in uh, they're in four down territory. So uh, he that was an ill-advised uh, throw there. He, you know, he, that was pretty dangerous. That could have just as easily been been picked off there by the by uh, uh, Josh Utterbrink uh, on that coverage there. Dan Barth was back there helping out as well. And Utterbrink and Barth have both been doing a great job here in this contest. Yes, sir. Well, it's a fourth down situation. Of course, Grove going for it, trailing 13 to 12, a 209 remaining third quarter. They're spreading them out here again. They'll probably run the track. Here we oh. go. Halfback oh. pass, looking downfield. Hartman has a receiver. It's going to be caught at the five yard line oh, no. and dropped. Incomplete. Oh, my. oh, my. Nice play by Coach Mike Fell. Yeah. And the intended receiver out there was number 27, Mark Bunn. Yeah, we used to call that 5 8 pitch out pass. And boy, he, uh, he ran it real well. I tell you what, I'm real impressed with uh, with Bill Hartman by golly. He he does a lot of good things. I I didn't see the young man that he's replaced, but uh, he, he'd have to be a dandy to be any better than this youngster. Kramer was averaging about six yards per carry. And again, Coach Mike Fell telling us that he has sprained an ankle and also wasn't too sure about the condition of his other running back, Chris Howard coming to this game because he had a hip pointer. Well, he hasn't run Chris a great deal, not as much as, as you might think. It's it's been a lot of uh, a lot of Bill Hartman in there tonight. But Bluffton held, you know, Bluffton held, staved off that rush by uh, Columbus Grove. Now let's see if they can add to it. Bo Schmutz handoff, Powell picks up a few. Yes, you know what'd be interesting too is just to see what kind of team Mike Fell would have if he had his first string quarterback in there. And again, talking about Brent Baxter. Who broke a finger at the beginning of the season, and Coach Fell says he will be back next week when Columbus Grove battles Upper Scioto Valley at McGuffey. Well, I tell you what, he's uh, given Eric Palti uh, a lot of experience these first four or five ball games, and he's uh, acquitting himself very well. Second and seven from the 36. Schmutz handoff again to Amstutz. Look at Amstutz break the tackles and go forward for the first down. Out of that wishbone, that fullback just barrels up in there. First man into the line gets the ball. They carry out a good uh, option fake, and uh, he picks up the first down. He's this, a pretty big guy too, 6'1", 205 pounds. Yeah, this is uh, this is Bluffton's uh, kind of football game right now. Just grind it out here. Just First and ten. The football. Ball now at the 44-yard line. We're down to a minute ten remaining third quarter. Still 13-12 on the lone zone scoreboard. This team right here, Bluffton, with the lead. There's the handoff again. A little bit of problems with that, that handoff as they got the ball to number 29, Lucas Cherry, who's 5'7", 165 pounds. He's also the backup quarterback. They told us the other two backup quarterbacks, Matt Starrett, number 11, has a broken hand, and number 14, Joel Steiner has a couple of broken bones in his leg. Yeah, so so all the uh, adversity isn't on the Columbus Grove side. However, uh, and those are backup people, and they've got uh, a couple more years to go here. 30 seconds, third quarter, it's second and eight. There's the handoff again. They go to Powell. Powell pulls forward to the 35, inside the 35 for another first down. Yeah, he, he knew where those chains were. He was going to get there. He is a dandy running back. He like really you said, is. he averages, Coach, 12, he came into the game averaging 12 yards a carry, 69 carries, 811 yards, and eight touchdowns coming into this contest. And, and up to this point, uh, Columbus Grove has done a pretty doggone good job of containing him. Uh, although he has broke off a couple uh, pretty sizable gains, but uh, all in all, uh, Columbus Grove is, is sure given a good account of themselves here tonight. Eight seconds. Let's see if Schmutz gets the playoff. We're down to four seconds. Three. And he will not get the playoff, and that's going to do it for the third quarter. We have played three quarters of action here from Harmon Field and Bluffton. Our score on the Lone Zone scoreboard, it's Bluffton 13, Columbus Groves 12. You're watching high school football action on Fox 67, WOHL. Long quarter. Remember the old days, washing your car by hand every couple weeks? It seemed that no matter how hard you tried, you just could never keep up with it. 
Well, those days are in the past. You might still have that old Chrysler, but now you take it to Westwood Car Wash every week. You kick back and listen to music and let the Westwood staff baby your car. And when you come out the other end, you listen. It's easy. Get gift certificates at Westwood Car Wash for all occasions. Visa, MasterCard, and Discover are accepted. See you soon. Why buy a Train High Efficiency XV90 gas furnace? The Smart Controller, the heart of the Train XV90 system. It listens to the thermostat for precise temperature control and monitors the gas valve to ensure proper combustion to help lower monthly heating bills. It's hard to stop a train. And if you call by October 31st, Canevian Sons Plumbing and Heating Collider will include a 15-year parts and labor warranty free with a qualifying Train High Efficiency gas furnace. Trust your home to Canevian Sons, another full-service train professional. Every day, major news stories break that you know nothing about. Extraordinary events that are often ignored by the media. Because they can't be explained. Or understood. Or somebody doesn't want you to know. Well, now somebody does. I'm Emmett Miller. And I'm Dana Adams. We're hosting the exciting new show, Strange Universe. Five nights a week, we'll report news of the phenomenal. The offbeat. The paranormal. And the unexplained. Strange Universe. Isn't it time you found out what's really going on? Weeknights at 10.30 on Fox 67 our final 12 minutes of this ball game and we've got ourselves a dandy maybe not the kind of game a lot of people expected here from Harmon Field tonight as Bluffton after beating up on Delphus Jefferson last week after they were stunned by Spencerville the week before a lot of people thought maybe coming to this game Bluffton had the big advantage but Columbus Grove with some key turnovers by Bluffton the game has been able to hang in there and keep it close and again only trailing by a point yeah this is uh, really a, a good football game under these conditions. These these young men are really uh, uh, handling themselves real well. Both teams, good, uh, good, good, strong football. Well, Bluffton's got the football. They're playing their type of game right now, grinding it out. First and ten for the 45. Schmutz will go with that pitch to Powell. There's the defense by Columbus Grove. Number 51. Looks like we got a flag down too. That's the linebacker, Nate Shoblin. Yeah, and that's going to go against Bluffton too, Nate, Coach. Nate has played himself a real good ball game here. Well, I think they probably ought to decline that one. And the down here, I think, is more important than the yardage. Jason Hicks is upset big time. Don't want to get him too mad. 6'2", 272. Takes his helmet off of the sideline. And might mean it might be against Jason for something he might have said or, or yeah, done. Th this might be an unsportsmanlike conduct. And if that's the case, this, uh, I think it's uh, uh, throwing a uh, forearm at the uh, headgear. Well, they're going to bring Dennis Lee. Well, they're going to bring the other official out and talk it over first. Dennis Lee wants to know a little bit more as he's. Yeah, but they never invite the coaches out <laughs> of those conferences. Well, you just got to go away. But, you got to go on in. Yeah, Dennis is getting in What's that going thing on? anyways. He, he wants to know. Well, I tell you, Hicks is on the sideline. They might have tossed him out of the game. Well, if they did, that's a that's a big blow to Bluffton, I'll tell you that. Well, he's on the sideline, and he is not coming back in. He should be in right now because it's only a second down 10. I would think so. And the Bluffton fans on the sideline not too happy. They do send in a backup now, number 56, and that is Michael Doty, 5'8", 232, and he is a tackle coach, so and he is a sophomore. Is out. And he is a sophomore. That's a big blow if they, and, and yeah, they, they had no choice. Uh, uh, of course, it's a big penalty, so it's uh, it's second down and um, Lord, 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30. So, uh, Say a mile. So yeah, it's, yeah, it's 25, it says on the scoreboard. Yeah. Second and 25 after yeah. that 15-yarder. It's a bunch. It's a bunch, I'll tell you. And I hope they didn't, uh, I hope he didn't do anything to disqualify himself because he is such a good football player. Well, there's one of those breaks again that Columbus Grove, they've been getting a lot of them tonight. Yes, sir. Well, I think uh, uh, Bluffton inflicts a lot of damage on themselves in, in a situation like that. Let's see how the offense handles that as they go with the handoff again. Nothing there. That's going to fire up that Columbus Grove defense now as Powell couldn't go anywhere. Leading the way in there for Columbus Grove is Greg Verhoff, the six foot two, 220 pound junior. Yes, sir. That's a big blow. That's a big blow if Jason Hicks has been has been ejected from this game, which I'm not sure he has, but he certainly isn't on the field. 
Well, third down, no gain there, so let's call it 25. Ball resting 40-yard line. We're down to 10.55. Bluffton with the lead and the football. And there's the fumble on the snap, and down goes Schmutz, and mm. it's going to be oh punt time for the Pirates. Oh, boy. Yeah, what a tough, uh, what a tough break for uh, for Bluffton here now. But uh, but they're still leading the ball game. Grove still has to get that ball either in the end zone or through them crossbars. Eric McCoy is going to punt. Well, let's see if Grove, let's see if Grove puts some pressure on him here. See if they go after that punter here. He's going to be punting from his own 25-yard line. Remember, wet conditions, high snap. He no, feels it's, a, it though. it's a return. It's a return. And the punt is going to, they're going to let it bounce, and it takes a Columbus Grove bounce, and takes a little bit of a roll for the Pirates. And that's, but it didn't even get to the first down marker. You know, that's... Uh, so at the 35, uh, Columbus Grove's taking over in pretty good shape here. Hey, Sneary's Drive-Thru in Columbus Grove is a proud sponsor of local high school sports. Visit Sneary's Drive-Thru on Route 65, just south of Columbus Grove, for cold pop, groceries, shell gas, and even a car wash. Sneary's Drive-Thru, Route 65 in Columbus Grove. Speaking of Grove, they've got the football, and they're down by one. Let's see if they can put a drive together here and take the lead. They're sitting in that wing T. And, uh, and uh, Bluffton's without Hicks in the middle of that line. Let's see how they handle Watch it. That's the trap. And there it is. It. There it is. But oh, there's the boy. defense for Bluffton all over the ball carrier. Yeah, Luke, uh, Luke Suter did a great job of stuffing that right there. They picked the wrong side to trap, I think. But didn't, did you say last time, though, they were rotating Hicks back and forth on the offense? and. Yeah, he was he was flip flopping there from, uh, and he was leading uh, most of the big gainers out there. He's a nice athlete. Well, let's see what Grove does on a second down nine for the 37. We're down to 9:30. Precious time ticking away for the Bulldogs. There's, There's the, the handoff again to Howard. Oh, Howard man. can't get much. Picks up a couple though. That's tough. That's tough. Uh, that play was developing real well there, and uh, and Chris Howard just uh, slipped down there. He tried to cut on his inside foot, and that's one of the no-nos. You got to plant that outside foot if you're going to go upfield here. So they're in third down and long now. They don't want to get up the ball here if they can if they can possibly uh, pull something out of the hat. Remember, Company 26 is going to be on the help us out on the field after the ball game with a nice, most valuable player T-shirt. Company 26 and printed sportswear in the Gomer Mall, corner of Lincoln Highway and Gomer Road. Third and seven, 39-yard line. There goes the counter, and look at the defense. Oh, boy. What a job. Number 33 in there, that's Josh Snare for the Bluffton Pirates. He's the inside linebacker, and he made him pay. Oh, boy, he put his face mask right in the numbers there, and they were having none of that. So, so uh, Grove is now forced to, to punt the ball back. And let's see what uh, what Bluffton can do with it, if they, if they return it or if they come after it. Punting for Grove is going to be, again, Bill Hartman, who's kind of done it all tonight for Columbus yeah. Grove. It would appear they're going to set up a return. That's end over end. And oh, touch their catch at the 32. Okay. That's all right. That's all right. He uh, uh, does a nice job, uh, Lucas Cherry, of fielding that punt. Uh, and not doing anything dumb with it. Sometimes in situations like that, uh, a youngster wants to be a hero. But uh, Lucas took that fair catch and stayed right there. Did a good job of handling that sloppy ball. Baseball on Fox Saturday afternoon, Baltimore at Toronto. That's a one o'clock start. As the season winding down, just a couple of games left. Getting ready for the playoffs in early October. First and 10 from the 32, Bo Schmutz, the quarterback. We're down to eight minutes and one second remaining in the ball game. And there's the handoff again. Amstutz up the middle, picks up about three or four yards. This is where you're going to see Bluffton yeah, he, start to grind uh, it away. They're calling him down. Uh, 
They're calling him down, I think. Well, they're going to give it to him uh, where he went down there. I thought the uh, one official was was calling that knee down back about two yards. But he picked up about five, close to five yards on the play. So uh, that's a good uh, good job. Now, uh, Bluffton has to control his football. Hang on to that ball. Seven minutes to go in this ball game and a one-point lead. Second and five, 37-yard line. Out of the wishbone. Schmutz, long count. He's going to go with the handoff again to M. Stutz, and he picks up about another yard. Yeah, like like we've said all the evening long, this uh, this Grove uh, five three defense is uh, you know is generally thought of as a as a defense against the passing team, but these kids play it so well and fill those gaps so well that uh, that they've made this a doggone good run defense. Those middle, those, those linebackers are very active in there for Columbus Grove. There's no doubt. Covered from head to toe with mud right now. Third and four from the 39. Schmutz goes with the handoff, and it's going to be short of the first down. Going to set up a fourth down situation for the Pirates, but they're very close. At least from our angle, it's fourth down. Uh, I think it's going to be fourth down. And this will be interesting right here. They're, they're at about the 45-yard line. Or they're just over the 40, maybe the 42. Now they're looking it over, and they're going to call yeah. timeout to, for a measure. They're going to measure it, but uh, I, I doubt whether they made it. And this is going to this is going to make for a, a very interesting call. And, and, and I'll tell you why. Uh, with 6.29 to go, uh, they would prefer not to give that ball back to Columbus Grove. And uh, and so with if if they don't make it, it's just going to be inches, and they don't. Right. It's going to be it's going to be a matter of inches here. Now this this is uh, this is a tough call here. They're going for it. Well, you, yeah, I guess they are. You, uh, Columbus Grove is in that five-three defense. They have a man on the nose. So chances are you're going to see a dive play, a fullback right or a fullback left, or maybe they'll, or maybe they'll give the ball here to uh, to Jeff Powell on the on a straight dive. But he's in the mud. I don't think that'd be a real safe call. Schmutz, fourth and short from the 42. The handoff up the middle. Lamb stuts and it's close. Oh boy, I don't know. I tell you, he got hit right at the line of scrimmage. But it all depends where the sure. the mark is, and it looks like from here they're standing in about the same spot. Nope, I don't think he made it. They'll, they'll, chances are they're going to, he may have lost a little bit on it, but they're going to measure it again, I think. And from here, it does not look like he made it, but that's why we got those guys down there at the sticks. They'll bring him in and stretch him out one more time, and oh, this will be a big, boy. big, well, we said it all night long. Yeah, that, this that'll be another be a, break for well, Grove. That'll be a great play for the for the fans in the stands and the, and the downtown quarterbacks to second guess all <laughs> Yeah, uh, you've had a few of those. Oh happening. yeah, huh? oh yeah. But uh, well, see, I had signs I held up, <laughs> and they're and, short. Uh, yes, they are. So the ball goes over to Grove. Now they got six minutes. Now wait a minute here. They're going right down with a magnifying glass to check this one out, and they say it's Grove's football. Yeah, they, that's a dramatic call, wasn't it? Yes, sir. Well, they took a <laughs> hair down there to see if they could get it between that ball. He even got his knees dirty. But he went right uh, down on his knees to measure that one. Yeah, that 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 could be one that coach will suffer with, but one I wouldn't uh, I wouldn't argue with it, uh, except except with the type of play. Uh, you know, I'm I'm a great quarterback sneak man, <laughs> and. Uh, well, so now let's see what Grove can do. Six minutes. With two seconds. pumped up teams. First and 10 from the 42. What a dandy ball game we've had here from Harmon Field. Going to go with the handoff and look at the defense. Number 75 for the Bluffton Pirates. Rick Orr. Rick Orr. That's big Good time job. play. Good job. Yes, sir. Boy, now I'll tell you, that makes it tough. But you know what? These Bulldogs have come back from that kind of thing all night. A big penalty, big uh, offensive interference penalty. Next play, they run the trap and get the first down. Let's see uh, if maybe they don't come back with that again. And I tell you, if this Bluffton team can win this football game, you talk about battling adversity. Second and 16 from the 48. Quarterback is Pauly. There's handoff. Trap, trap oh, nothing not there. Get much, no sir. I think this 
the things that have been happening to Bluffton all night, night long has just fired up this defense even more, especially with the ejection of Travis Hicks. Yeah, no kidding. No or Jason kidding. Hicks, I'm sorry. I used to have a basketball player by the name of Travis Hicks. Well, in Ohio State, he had a great tackle by the name of John Hicks not many years ago. A great football player. Well, we got another timeout call, this time by Columbus Grove. And while we have the timeout on the field, we'll tell you we've got a couple of great ball games coming up on Sunday. We've got it doesn't get any better than NFL football on Fox. The Vikings against Skip's <clears throat> Giants. Yes, the Giants sir. are playing well. <laughs> the Packers, tentative now. The Packers, that's at 1 o'clock, by the way, that Giants game. Then the Packers will be at Seattle at 4 o'clock. Now, there's a team, the Packers. The Pack is back, I think. And if you didn't hear, remember, Jeff Harding of St. Henry, number one draft choice of the Lions, signed this morning with the Lions, finally. And he's been waiting. He's been over at St. Henry working out with the weights at St. Henry. And that's a good place to work out with weights. <laughs> Well, I think he had a lot to do with uh, with that weight room over there in St. Henry. Well, he's a guy that wanted more money, and as you said before, Skip, a guy that deserved more money. I think they only had a few hundred thousand dollars left after paying all the other salaries, and Jeff didn't just did not think it was fair. And now he is ready to go back, and we have not heard the details of that contract. It, it, it's it's hard for most people to conceive that a guy wouldn't work for for play for for five hundred thousand, right? But not when your counterpart are getting a million and a half. That's right. Third down and 15. Big play here for Columbus Grove. Pass. It's going to be short. Misses his intended receiver. And his intended receiver was his was number 25, Mike Sauter. Now what they have to do, I know there's just five minutes on the clock, but they got to punt the ball here. They got uh, a third down and about 14 or 15. And uh, what they want to look for here is a fumble. You know, uh, kick them deep and uh, and uh, hope for the best. And they're going to go but for it. They're going to go for it. My, oh, my. I don't know about that. Well, fourth and 15 from the 47. This is, there's a timeout called by the quarterback because he was setting up in the shotgun. That will give Mike Fell a little bit more time to think this one over. With five minutes and one second remaining, it's 13 to 12. It's been that way since the beginning of the third quarter. In fact, our only touchdown in the third quarter came at the 6.02 mark. And that was an eight yard end around by Brett Richards. And that made the score 13 to 12, and the extra point, two-point conversion was no good. And that's where we stand. Now you got uh, you got Jeff Powell back there in the receiving position, uh, along with uh, Lucas Cherry. And uh, yeah, I think Mike Fell had a, a second thought about that uh, situation. Five minutes is a long time. And you don't want to give him that ball at the 50 if you can help it. Bill Hartman's going to punt. And he'll be punting from his 40-yard line, about the 42. It's straight up, and it's going to come straight down and bounce. Oh, it takes a, a Grove bounce. bounce. Oh, my. All the yeah. way down to the oh, 10, my. coach. Inside the 10. Oh, oh. Good what a play. nice job. You know, uh, that youngster will get my... Uh, and you know what? they got to be careful now. It's 13 to 12. Bluffton has it deep in their own territory, and it's wet out there. You betcha. You betcha. That's why I said the punt was the play there, not... Uh, not going for a 14-yard fourth down situation. And uh, and and the good things happened. The ball got down inside the 11. Remember, they, they've they they've fumbled a couple times. They've had a couple turnovers. Uh, Bose had a little bit of a problem handling that snap. And Travis Hicks and Jason Hicks is out of the football game. First and 10 from the nine. You betcha, you betcha. There's, there's that, that pitch, pitch again. Kyle tries to cut it to the outside, and he was a couple of tacklers away from hey. making that a big one. Isn't he a dandy? He isn't he a dandy? He got him out of trouble. And you can see why he is leading the region in rushing. Yes, sir. He is a dandy. And you know what? I've been I, I've been crediting, and rightfully so, a lot of his success on those sweeps to uh, Jason Hicks, but he didn't have Hicks that time. Did it on his own. They've got more football players in that in those uh, pirate uniforms than, uh, than you'd think. They, uh, they're doing a great job. Well, it's a second and short now from the 18-yard line as they're out of trouble now. Yeah, just hold on to the ball and eat up the clock. Mo Schmutz, the quarterback. And we've got a flag, too much time. 
And that's not what Bluffton wanted at this point when no, they had a second and no. one. I don't know what the... Yes, yeah. sir. But even at that, that uh, that seemed like a quick, you know... Yeah, a lot of guys up here are saying that. Yeah, I I don't know whether... Whether I, uh, but it doesn't matter whether I agree or not. <laughs> it don't care uh, anymore. It never Skip. did. It never did matter whether I agreed or not. So uh, <laughs> I never had the last word. And, they were usually and, pretty nice to you, though, weren't they? Oh yeah, you betcha. <laughs> Second and six from the 13, and that was a big penalty. Let's see what happens now. Schmutz. Long count. There's, There's the football. Fumble. It's on the ground, and Schmutz covers it. Yeah, see, that's uh, third down situation now. I tell you, the time is ticking away, but if Columbus Grove can hold them right here, they should get themselves in pretty good field position. I tell you what, if you're a Grove fan or a Bluffton fan, either one, man, you got your heart right up uh, <laughs> next to your Adam's apple at this point in time. 3.40 to go. And this is a big game because Grove already has a couple losses in the conference. Bluffton has has one already. Third, third down and five, man, or third and six. Let's see what happens on this with Bo Schmutz. Schmutz is gonna go with the handoff. Nothing there, Groves holds him again. They're gonna get the football back. They're gonna get it back. A good call by Mike Fell of punting the football away. Yes, sir. His defense holds and they're gonna get another shot at it. Yes, sir. That now, is if now Bluffton doesn't pull now, anything out of they, the... They, well, they've blocked a punt now once tonight. And uh, and you would think this might be a good time to go after one. However, you don't want to rough that kicker in this situation. And back there is Bill Hartman, number 15. He's a guy to watch for. He's caused some problems tonight for Bluffton. Snap, going to be kicking from about the three. Nice looking nice punt. Point. It's going to be taken by Hartman at about the 45. He's at the 40. And that's where he's going to go down inside the 40-yard line. Bluffton, will, or rather Columbus Grove, with two minutes and 39 seconds will have their final series to try to win this football game. They trail 13 to 12 on the Lone Zone scoreboard. That was only a nine-yard or 10-yard return there, but it was a great 10-yard return. He ran out of one tackler's arms, ran through a tackler, and uh, and they're in, uh, they're nearing the promised land now. <laughs> but I tell you, the Bluffton defense has played very well. We've got an official's timeout, a little bit of a you know, pant leg problem. Yeah, someone's uh, knee brace is sticking out from under his uh, pants, and they had to pull it down. And now Bluffton calls a timeout, so they're gonna they're gonna rev them up here defensively. And uh, Mike Fell's gotta gotta come up with some more rabbits out of that hat to. Uh, to get on the scoreboard. I'd like to remind you that Skip and I are going to be in Elida next week. Shawnee taking on Elida. Mike Pruitt's going to be with us. And the Elida Alumni Association at the same time is going to be hosting a Harlan's Chicken Barbecue before that football game. Serving time begins at 5 o'clock and will run all the way up until 7 o'clock. So get some chicken and enjoy a great game with us. Fox 67. Well, we're seeing a good one here as that rain sweeps down across the field and into our window here. But uh, uh, Bluffton and, uh, and Columbus Grove have put on a, a good display of high school football here tonight. Now let's see, 2.39 left on the clock, no time to panic, but don't waste any time getting those plays called, Coach. Eric Pauly is a quarterback, number 13. He's just a junior. He is going to go to his money man so far, Hartman, who will go nowhere. There's that defense again by Bluffton. Yeah, they they played that real well. Well, they they had a pretty good idea. Number 75 there was Rick Orr in on that uh, in on that play for Bluffton. Uh, he stopped that thing alone out there, and uh, so we got a second down and. And 10 to go again. Dennis Lee firing up his troops on the sideline, getting them to hold the Columbus Grove Bulldogs in this series. Down to two minutes and four seconds. Second and 10 for the 40. Play action, back to passes. Paulie looking downfield. The ball's knocked down. Good defense. Right. Back there by number 83, Mike Kinn. Yeah, great, great coverage by uh, by Bluffton. There was the waggle pattern. First time, uh, first time tonight that uh, I think, the, no, second time Grove uh, Grove have used it. They ran a, a type of waggle for the one touchdown. But uh, what do we got, a flag? Well, 
We got another flag. Now what is that and one? I'm not sure. Another, it may be roughing the passer there because it was in the back. Yeah, it was. Roughing the passer. What a break for Columbus Grove. I tell you, oh another my. break. And oh if, I, if I was counting breaks, I'm gonna have to use my second hand here now. No, don't count. It's going to be now a... It's going to be a first down, First down. Yep, they're moving the stick. So yes, you talk sir. about a break. Yes, sir. They're down there. They're down there on the doorstep to the promised land now. What do we got? 5, 10, 15. They're inside the 20. We're right on the 20-yard line. 156 left to go. <laughs> Again, I continue to say, if Lufton can pull this one out, the odds have been against them all night long. First and 10 from the 25. Baldy goes with the handoff and nothing going on again. No, they're running the trap there. You know they're they're staying away from the from the, the they're running everything into the uh, a short side of the field. Now that was that was a that was a trap up the middle, so you'd have to consider it the short side. Although the action came wide, but look at that mud out there in the middle of that field. See they 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 they're they're not they're not going to want to run that way. Second and nine for the 24. We're down to a minute 30. Pauly going to go with the handoff again to Hartman. He'll turn the corner, but he'll go nowhere again. But he got out of bounds and stopped the clock, so he's going to have a third down and, and long. And I'm, I'm afraid he's going to have to come up with some kind of counter. And, and, and you know, Bluffton knows that, uh, that the middle of that field is a, is a bit soggy, and their chances of running there are not real great. So consequently, they're, they're slanting their defense into the short side of that field, into that sideline, and that's where... Uh, Grove is almost forced to run. Third down and eight. It's going to be tough to pick an MVP for this game. I'm glad you're doing it. <laughs> I have no names in my head right now except for two. And we have to find out who's going to win this game first. Third and eight, 23-yard line. They're going pass play. That's down in the end zone. Too much. And there's a flag. Another they throw a flag and interference oh, against either Bluffton or Grove, but it sure looks like it's going to go against the Pirates. It's against Bluffton. That's a 15-yard penalty, and that's going to put them now, will they give them a half the distance on that? I'm not sure about that particular. They'll, they'll get an automatic first down, however. Uh, it will be a, uh, but see, they're inside, the, they're inside the 20, so it, it will probably be a half the distance. A half the distance. Uh, Dennis Lee is wanting some explanations on that, but I. But it was uh, there was contact, and of course the official is a lot closer to it than uh, than you or I are. So, so that that is going to go against Bluffton. They've had a lot of a lot of things go against them Boy. tonight. Uh, but uh, credit Dennis Columbus Lee Grove. wants timeout too. He, you, you credit Columbus Grove. They keep coming at them. Dennis Lee's going to go out and talk to his team. He can't believe it. The Bluffton fans can't believe it. What else could go wrong in this fourth quarter for Bluffton? Two big penalties. One a roughing the passer. And now an interference call has put the ball at the 12-yard line. Columbus Grove started at around the 40-yard line, and they right. have not done anything themselves to nope. move the football. Right. Except run a few plays that got some but penalties I'll, but for I'll them. What? credit for that they still have uh, uh, Columbus Grove still has their work cut out for them it's only 12 yards but uh, uh, the uh, Bluffton defenders do not have to defend much in depth now I wouldn't be surprised you'd see maybe not on this uh, but at, if they don't make yardage on these first two downs then that third and fourth down you will see that play that they scored on earlier uh, that little uh, uh, counteraction pass that they ran uh, again, but but Bluffton is uh, is tough defensively, and they haven't given Grove much. So let's let's see how this reads out here for us. A minute 15 remaining, folks. It's first and 10, 12 yard line. The quarterback Eric Pauly goes handoff right side, a pickup of a couple that time. No, oh, that was inside pretty good. the five yard line. Good surge by the right side of that uh, Columbus Grove line, and uh, that was probably uh, uh, Bill Hartman. Was it Hartman? I think so. They don't get down to the five, though. They only get down to about the seven. Clock's running, men. 50 seconds. Forget that long count. 
Keeper, Baldy, going down, Get out of gets about a yard maybe if that sets up a third down. Yeah. All about the six yard line. 43 seconds left to go on this clock. Whoever wins or loses this ball game is going to do a lot of second guessing tomorrow. Well, they can pick up a first down without getting the touchdown. Yeah, but the clock, 43 seconds. Uh, yeah, you're right, but they, I, don't, I haven't, I don't know how many timeouts uh, Columbus Grove has used it to this point. It's a third and three now from the six yard line. So they can get it down to about the three and pick up a first down. Like Skip said though, we've only got 43 seconds they remaining. Ought, they ought to have a couple plays called here. Man in motion, Paulie. It's going to go at the handoff again. It's going to be Hartman, and he is inside the five. Once again, he's going over that right side, and there was a good surge out of that offensive line. I can't read numbers. Mike but, Fell wants uh, timeout. Let's see where they're going to place it. They're going to place it about 30 seconds. Uh, he's still uh, about the four, it looks like. Yeah, he's still short. Ouch. <laughs> 30 seconds remaining, and it's going to be a fourth down and two situation, and they're going to move it to about the five. And he's still, still short of that first down. We're going, to, we're going to be in a situation where we're looking. We've got a real bad angle on this. but Well, and you know what? If Even if Bluffton takes over the ball, the smart thing to do would be take a safety, but a safety would lose the ball game. <laughs> Oh, they're going to kick the field goal. Oh, my. They're going to kick a field goal on a fourth down and two. The ball at the four. Now, don't forget, on that one extra point, they faked it and threw it. Right. So, so we might see that, too. 21-yard field goal attempt. And the kicker... Chris, well, let's see. It's going to be number 11 for yeah. Columbus Grove. Jason Stetscholey. Jason Stetscholey. Let's see what he can do from 21 yards out. This could give him the victory with 30. Well, we still have 30 seconds. Good snap. The hole. The kick Whoa. is up, and it is going to be short. Oh, boy. My, oh, my. The field goal attempt was oh, no good, oh, and Bluffton will get the ball back. 26 seconds to go here, and... Uh, are there flags on the field? Oh, well, no, no, no. The official is just signaling for the ball from the ball boy. I thought uh, I thought he was waving a flag there, but I guess not. And the other thing about that field goal is not only do they miss it, but they give Bluffton the ball out on the 20-yard line. They kicked it into the end zone. So that was not, the ball was not well met. Now, but, uh, you know, I don't know that... Uh, that uh, Mike had much of a much of a choice there, because that's a heck of a Bluffton defense. Well, a knee down on this one on first and ten with 26 seconds yeah. is what they'll do here. At least they fell down. Bo yeah. Schmutz did, and they're going to let time they, they, expire. They don't have to do anything else. Just get the clock started, and it's going to run out. Bluffton's won the football. And you can just say that they've hung on for a victory in this one. Wow, I guess in so. a great ball game. The Bluffton Pirates are going to defeat the Columbus Grove Bulldogs in a fantastic ball game here from Harmon Field in Bluffton. Our final score on the Lone Zone scoreboard, Bluffton 13, Columbus Grove 12. We've got our Company 26 postgame show coming up next on Fox 67 WOHL. When you have affordable cable information and entertainment, you have the world at your fingertips. With Time Warner Cable, there is no expensive equipment to buy. You can watch different programming on each TV hooked up to cable, including local broadcast channels, without paying an additional monthly fee. And right now, you can take advantage of special savings. We are not alone. From Bluffton, our ball game is over, and the Bluffton Pirates, I guess the best way to describe it, has survived this contest. I'm with Dennis Lee, and our player of the game we'll be talking about here in a second. Let's talk to Coach Dennis Lee, first of all. Coach, what a ball game. <laughs> uh, you know, it's uh, two uh, 
two great football teams going at it. Uh, you know, we're great rivals uh, over the years, and uh, you know their kids, uh, you know, played their hearts out. Our kids, second half, uh, that final drive played our hearts out, and it was just a great ball game. You know, Coach, I don't know if I've ever seen a game, and of course you're in the Northwest Conference, you've been involved in a lot of big football games, but where a game where so many calls, so many uh, uh, miscues occurred in the game that went against you, and you still were able to pull it out. Yeah, we were very fortunate. Uh, we had everything in the book go. <laughs> you know, against us tonight uh, for whatever reason. And, uh, you know, we were, uh, we just feel like we're real fortunate to hang on for a win. Uh, the, our conference this year is, uh, from top to bottom, uh, is extremely tough, and we just have to be ready to play every Friday. Okay, well, the best of luck to you the rest of the way, Coach, and thanks for talking to us. Thank you very much. We'll let you go. Dennis Lee, the head coach of the Bluffton Pirates, will bring in our most valuable player. Get him out of the rain. Come on over, guys. This is Jeff Powell. We didn't get the final numbers because we the rain is coming down hard. We're going to get out here as quick as we can. We're going to take a time out, though, when we come back. We'll talk to our most valuable player, brought to you by Company 26, and that's Jeff Powell. Okay. Welcome back to Harmon Field. Again, our ball game is over. Bluffton has won this contest 13-12, a big win. And with me right now is the most valuable player in this particular football game, and that's Jeff Powell. Jeff had a big run, a 45-yarder for one touchdown. Congratulations, Jeff. Thank you. And this had to be a tough game for you guys. This weather was miserable tonight. I mean, since we came on tonight to do the post-game show around, or the pre-game show around 6 o'clock, it started raining and hasn't, hadn't stopped since that time. Had to be a mess out there. Yeah, it was a mess. And it was, both teams were just struggling to get their plays off and get their blocks but uh you know i guess we just had some extra tonight did it surprise you the way grove played this football game tonight i think a lot of folks coming in thought well bluff you know they beat up on jefferson last week they lost that one to spencerville with the other two opponents they shut out this is going to be a pretty easy win for bluffton yeah we were really pumped up about our win last week i guess grove came in like we did last week this and they just they played a real tough football game but we escaped like Spencerville did to us in week uh, week two or three. I don't know if you're too familiar with the guy standing beside you here, but this is Coach Skip Bachman, who used to coach for St. Mary's. You had a few running backs like Jeff, didn't you, Coach? Yeah, but uh, you can always use one like this. <laughs> this is uh, uh, Jeff had a, a great football game. He had that ability to accelerate even on this on this turf tonight, which was pretty slick. Although he said the footing he didn't feel was too bad. But that's what you want to hear out of good running backs. Okay, and I know it's muddy out here and everything. We got a shirt for you, a most valuable player T-shirt, Coach. You got that? Yeah. Get a little bit of mud on it here yeah. for you. Well, hold, once you hold that up, Coach, to the camera. All right, we'll and that's sponsored by our good friends from Company 26. And we'll give that to you, Jeff. And we'll let you keep that clean. And the best of luck the rest of the way. Thanks a lot. OK. Jeff Powell, again, our most valuable player. We're going to take one more time out. When we return, we'll have all the final finals for you here from Harmon Field. 652 mark of the first quarter. It was a 45-yard run. It put the Bluffton Pirates up six zip on the Lone Zone scoreboard, the extra point was also good. That made it seven zip after one. In the second quarter, we had a couple of scores by Columbus Grove. First one came at the 636 mark. It was a 19 yard pass from Paulie and Mike Sauter, and that made the score seven to six. Two point conversion was no good, and that's where the score stood until the 258 mark of the second quarter from five yards out. And if Columbus Grove would have won this ball game, I think a good candidate would have been Bill Hartman, the backup fullback for Grove, as his touchdown made it 12 to seven, and that's the way the score stood at the half. Only one score in the third quarter, and it was a biggie because it determined this football game, and that was a, a nice play, an end around by Brett Richards from eight yards out at the 602 mark, and that's the way it ended up, 13 to 12 coach, but Columbus Grove with a, a few more opportunities to score in this game and actually win the game towards the end. Hey, I'll tell you, Columbus Grove played a great football game under adverse conditions. They, ca they came in with uh, a, a banged up football team and uh, and played in this sloppy weather, and and they did a whale of a job. Yeah, I, I'm sure that coach is telling them, you know, they can hold their heads high. They played a great football game. They could have won it. They had opportunities. However, they were playing a pretty doggone good football team in Bluffton. But in any event, it was a great high school football game, and these young men gave a, gave a, a real fine account of themselves throughout. Okay, and again, next week we are going to be over at Elida. It's going to be Shawnee taking on the Elida Bulldogs. Mike Pruitt will be with us to help us out during Maybe he'll hold the umbrella for us. <laughs> you suppose? I, I, hope it, I hope it doesn't rain. You only need two more months till basketball ah, season. This is real football, like, whether you yeah. die. <laughs> He's an <in> administrator. <laughs> and our, our ball, 
we got to say thanks to Ronnie Coons again, <laughs> talking about sissies, carrying the umbrella around with his camera all night long, doing a great job, and Scott, of course, up at the top. And again, until next week when we are at Elida for Skip Bachman. Until next week, this is Carl Metzger saying so long and good weather, everyone. Thanks for watching High School Football on Fox 67 WOHL. This Columbus Grove Bulldogs Bluffton Pirates matchup is a presentation of WOHL Television in Lima.